Yes. Yep. Once again, it's a a hot Saturday evening, if you will, but still early. I mean, we're at 6 o'clock kickoff time. I'm sure there are a lot of folks that are glad here along the Gulf Coast. It was not a 3 o'clock start time. No, not at all. Although there were some going on around the country. Again, welcome in. Dan Gresham along with Lemont Williams. Glad you're on board with us as we get ready to get this one underway. And, again, these two teams kind of coming from opposite directions. But at the same time, I think it's something, Lemont, that – uh, the folks here in Beaumont uh, can uh, kind of identify with what's going on with the Delta Devils. They're coming off a 1-10 and 10 season, and Lamar found themselves in a very similar place just a couple of years ago. Yeah, not not so long ago, Lamar was on the bottom of the Southland Conference, to be you know quite frank. And now things are turned around due to the success of head coach Mike Schultz and getting the program turned around. And and Lamar appreciates that. You can definitely tell the fans are out supporting here on this hot and humid day like you just mentioned, Dan. And football is back in in the city of Beaumont, Texas. A lot of people are excited. Here's an opportunity for Lamar to go 2-0. They haven't done that since 1985 football season. So everyone's excited, including myself. They're wearing all white. So let's see how it plays out. Yeah, we should mention a couple of things going on. Uh, Lamar University home team normally, obviously, would wear the dark uniforms. But a bit of a, 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 a situation with Mississippi Valley State. Apparently, they had some uh, issues with uniforms and made the option and decided they were going to have to wear their colored uniforms, dark uniforms, and Lamar would be in their white uniforms. So there you see, coming down the stadium. To my knowledge, Lemont, um, I've been around doing games here for a while. First time I can ever remember the home team wearing white. But that might not be a bad idea the way the heat is today. Might not be a bad <laughs> idea to have white on. Yeah. Take every advantage you possibly can. All right, Joe, as we mentioned, big tailgate party going on out in the parking lot. Fans moving into the stadium, ready to get this one started, cheering their Lamar Cardinals, coming off that big 65-point uh, roll that they had last week on offense and see if they can keep it going. And, of course, uh, Mississippi Valley State, the Delta Devils coming in after a tough one really losing by 20 yards. They had a chance to pull off the upset win against Tennessee State in their opener, 26-20. So the Delta Devils have been spending a lot of time on the road. Yeah, they've been – I mean, their stadium is not big enough to hold a lot of capacity of football players, so they do have football games there, and they also host their homecoming. But Mississippi Valley State's team is not – unfamiliar about traveling on the road. They're a team that learns how to develop their chemistry on the road. Should be comfortable. We'll see how it all shakes out. Starting lineups coming up next. Coin toss, middle of the field. Lamar, as uh, we'll be receiving, it was actually the Delta Devils winning the coin toss, but it will be Lamar on offense first. So it will give these fans a chance to see if last week 65 points in a hurry was something that was a bit of a fluke playing an NAI team. What might be, or, or are they for real? Because I got a feeling that uh, this team is going to give them a little bit more of a challenge, don't you, Lemon? Absolutely. I believe Mississippi Valley is coming in from the SWAT conference. They're going to have a different mindset on the road here against Lamar. Lamar is really going to be tested in this very series. Last week, they got out to a red-hot start, throwing the football down the field to their tight ends. Let's see how Jordan Hoy leads this offense on the field. Can he continue to have success in the pocket but also with his legs? Yeah, and he is a multi-thread quarterback. There's no doubt about that. He's just as comfortable pulling it out and running it himself as he is handing off or looking across the middle or even going deep. Meanwhile, Mississippi Valley State uh, is going to be playing a 3-4 defense. We'll set that up for you, and we'll get things uh, rolling here. Number 47 uh, to be doing the kicking for the Delta Devils is Hayden Schuster. And back deep for the Cardinals, they'll send a couple of folks back. Likely to see the Cardinals try to go straight on to the offense if they can. There's the kick, and we're underway here from Provo Humphrey Stadium. In Beaumont, that one's going to bound out. And I'm sure if he tried to run it out or covered it in the end zone, but I think they're going to call him. They're going to bring it out to the 25, so that's good news for a Cardinals fan. A little bit scary there. 
to start things off. Didn't, couldn't tell if Jack Rowe. So it was ruled a touchback, and they will bring it out to the 25-yard line. That's where Lamar will go to work. Again, if you're unfamiliar, they love to run out of the shotgun, out of a spread. You can see three right, one left, and a single back in the backfield. And off with the very first carry of the night is Miles Wanza. Had 28 last week Mm -hmm. on six carries and came out of the game a little bit earlier. Uh, Coach Schultz for Lamar said he tweaked early and he just didn't want to take any chances with him and took him out. It's good to see Miles Wanza in there, the junior running back out of Houston, Texas. Very speedy guy, has a good vertical speed, gets to the outside real quick. Second down, going to get it outside. You mentioned working those tight ends, and they are going to do that. That's Case Robinson picking up his first catch, and it looks like the first down of the afternoon for Lamar. Quick strike there to the outside by Jordan Hoy. What he wants to do is get his rhythm going. Their tempo-style offense, Jordan Hoy wants to find his tight end, his, one of his top tight ends in Case Robinson early in his first quarter. Going back to the air, finds an open receiver down inside to about the 42-yard line. Nice catch that time. Going to Eric Pizarro. A bit of a surprise, you know, Pizarro, a freshman out of Rio Hondo, just 5'9", but he had three catches last week. Very tough court. I mean, wide receiver in Pizarro, Pizarro, he was able to come across the middle like we just saw in that last play. Coach Schultz is going to need that effort throughout this game. Hoy, three backs. Gives to the second man through, but... Goes for nothing. That time standing in the way, coming up with a big tackle is Ramillas Carey out of Florence, Mississippi, a junior. Nice job did by Carey shooting the gaps. Was able to get behind the line of scrimmage and be able to stop Wanza in his tracks. Could bring up a second and 11. Two wideouts to the left. Hoy, a little bit of a stumble, but still manages to get it through the second man through, that is Darian Randall, who had a big week last week, five carries, 79 yards. And then what we're going to see throughout this game is a running game by committee for Lamar Cardinals. You're going to see Randall, you're going to see Miles Wanza, as well as A.J. Walker. That triple threat there in the backfield shows a lot of depth, but Coach Schultz is going to be able to establish his running game early with those three guys. Back out of the spread. Delta Devil will show a little rush back off on the blitz. Hoy takes advantage. Picks up about three on the keeper. So still short of that first down. And what we're seeing right now from the Delta Devils defensively, they have a spy, basically a guy that's going to shadow Jordan Hoy because they know that his dual threat ability to get outside of the pocket will hurt Mississippi Valley State. On that last play, they did a really good job by having a spy shadow Jordan Hoy to bring him down and force him the first three and out here in the first quarter. Carmona comes on to punt it away for the Cardinals. Clayton back deep. Clayton back deep for Mississippi State. Ball's off a player into the end zone. Flags are thrown. Recovered in the end zone by Lamar, covered by Lamar. I looks I would think that you're probably gonna have an interference call on the receiver, but we'll see. Pretty sure that's what it's called against Lamar bumping into the punt returner on that last play. That would be the end you were guessing where the flag was thrown. But the discussion underway, and we've got Mike's on this evening, so you'll be able to hear the call. You can see that. They are pointing down at the ground to indicate maybe that's where it's going to be. And just as we thought, it was indeed. And you see the replay right here. So it'll be a first down for Mississippi Valley State. Here's the replay of that punt. Ah, you see, he tried to make the run up. It was really wasn't one of those where. So many times, Lee Mott guy waves a fair catch, and he just gets, you know, knocked to the ground. It really looked like he came running forward, Lamar running back, and they just collided there. Cardinals are going to go with a 4-2-5 defense. 
And you see Mississippi State to Jarek Bryant, the quarterback number 16, and getting the uh, first carry for the Devils, the Delta Devils, is going to be Bryant on the keeper. And we're going to see a similar style offense from Mississippi Valley. They want to spread out Lamar's defense, but use their quarterback legs as well in this first quarter. Not going to work that time. Coming up to make the tackle for Lamar and a big stop that time. Looked like it, it was Darian Wilson. There he goes off the field, number two. And again, the Cardinals will rotate. They've got some really, really talented men up front on their defensive line. Yeah, one of the guys that stands out to me is Daniel Crosley right there in the shot, number 90, plays defensive end as well as outside linebacker. Keep your eye on that player. He's an impact player for Lamar defensively. Again, now the shotgun, going to swing it out and busting a couple of tackles and getting all the way out for a first down is number 23 for, and that is John Derrick Smith out of the backfield. The senior 5'10 running back. Missed opportunity there defensively for Lamar. You have to get him off the field. You got to wrap up and bring him to the ground. Content to go right back up the middle, pick up two or three on that second down play. But we've got a motion call. Ball start there on Mississippi Valley. Try to catch Lamar off guard with that quick set offense. But you got to get your offensive line set first. Well, yeah, and it's, it's interesting because I've heard it said, Coach Schultz said it last week, and I heard him say it again this week, and many coaches say it, that, that the biggest improvement of the season is from the first to the second yes. game. And really a lot of that is about the miscues like mm -hmm. that one where you have motion on the offensive line. So now it's still first down, but now it's first and 15 versus first and 10. Double wide outs, left and right. Still the keeper by DeJeric Bryant. Bryant uh, took over at the end of last season and had his career best game against Tennessee State last week. He went 27 of 52 in the air, and he uh, rushed a couple of times as well, had a couple of touchdowns. And what we're seeing from Mississippi Valley right now, they want to, I mean, continue to run the football in the – interior defense of Lamar. If you're Mississippi Valley, find a way to get the ball to the outside, kind of spread out that box with Lamar right now. A little motion going one way, then back the other, and the give. Not going to pick up the first down. Nice play that time coming up to help out the stop is Michael Lawson. And that's how you run down here if you're Michael Lawson. He had an outstanding game last week. He did. Defensively, his guy right here, he has a nose for the football. He runs downhill and makes sound tackles in the open field. Lamar will need that consistency throughout this first half and the game if they're going to win this game here in front of their home fans. Yeah, Lawson came up with the sole interception last yeah. week in that victory. See the discussion? Let's hear the decision. Take that foul, obviously, and it goes back the other direction. And it just feels like to me, Dan, with Mississippi Valley State, you know, they take two steps forward and they end up taking four backwards. And it just seems like they're shooting them, themselves in their own foot right now offensively. You know, they have some success running the football and trying to establish the ball on the outside edge. But the miscues and the penalties will kill them on the road here in Beaumont, Texas. If you're not familiar, Lamar actually employs co-coordinators, both on defense and offense. On defense, it's uh, Troy Douglas and Cam Clark. So they're calling it. And, he's, and you will see them switch, too. They'll go from a 3-2-5 uh, a, a alignment sometimes. Then they'll jump into a 4-3. It's, <laughs> it's interesting, the sets that they're running. A lot of coaching on that sideline. Oh, yeah. You can see it all going on right there. <laughs> and they divide it all up. So it's going to bring up a third and a very long 22 yards, and the depth of the Devils had it going on, and then they kind of stalled out yeah. here. Offensively, they tried to establish their running game, but they, again, the miscues and the penalties killed them in that series, which forced their first, uh, well, th third down and long right here. Let's see how it plays out. Notice, again, only three down linemen. 
And then they get the help from the backers and all of the guys in the secondary. They come up and make the start. They'll be well short of the first down, and that is going to bring up a punting situation. So neither team finding much success on their first offensive possession. And with 8.42 to go here in the first quarter, we still have yet to see a point put on the board. Yeah, both teams want to establish a running game, and this is – it's a chess match right now between both teams. We want to see who's going to bend defensively. Eventually, somebody's running game is going to take off. There you go. Chance to see. We'll see how this punt. They get it up and away. Clayton Jarvis. Here comes the punt. We're down. We've got a flag on the field, though. 50-30 to the 20. Off to the races. And all the way back comes Michael Lawson. The question is, will it stand or is it going to be on Lamar and it'll be all wiped out? I guess we'll find out in just a second. It's a great return there, though. Yeah, absolutely, Danny. If that play stands, excellent job there by Michael Lawson. He saw We saw him defensively making plays, running downhill, making sound tackles in the open field. But that might go against Lamar on this one. Yeah, looks like it's going to be holding against the receiving team and an insult to injury. You've got to move it 10 yards back from the spot of the foul. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back again, all tied up, zip, zip, with 8.03 left to play in the first. C243 by on ESPN Plus.com slash PPV. Lamar, second possession of the afternoon. Going to start at their 30 yard line. Jordan Hoy, again, quarterback. Going to pitch it out wide and see what he can get to work going out to the wide side. And Wands is going to pick up about seven or eight on that one, Lemont. And, Dan, that was a really good play call there. A misdirection. They sent the guard and the tackle to, to the right-hand side, but they tricked Mississippi Valley by pitching the ball to Miles Wanza to pick up six yards. Wanza comes out, but Hoy looks he's going to keep, does all he can to get the first down. Looks like he stretched out enough. And, you know, you got to give credit, too, to Lamar's offensive line. Oh, a yeah. lot of veterans up there, a bunch of guys that, you know, are coming back, uh, seniors, juniors, and, and talk about, you know, so many times people will say, well, you know, they're not going to have any size at a school this size. Mm -hmm. But if you look across the front, 6'5", 6'4", 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", that's some pretty good size on the offensive line with a lot of experience. And think about it, Dan. It started three years ago. It Coach, did. When Coach Schultz showed up, first thing he wanted to do is make sure that his guys ate steak and potatoes because they beat up within the year. Everybody before that, they had no linemen. Well, that I can remember, no linemen over 300 pounds. But now everyone is, is a little bit stronger, a little yep. bit faster, I mean a little bit bigger, and that's, as well as experience. Experience teaches a lot of players how to get better. And right now, yep. Lamar has a really experienced offensive line. Aiden Kealeho is uh, from Edmond, Oklahoma. He goes in at 289. Colton Peterson, the left guard, two, uh, 323. Stefan Cooper, the center, 280. Tomatoa Nahar is 305. And Eris Gilmore, uh, guard, the right tackle, 6'3", 310. So personal foul on Kirkland Banks, the wide receiver. And that's going to cost the Cardinals. Here's a look at Kirkland Banks, the junior out of Lake Charles. Kirkland Banks had a very impressive game, I mean impressive game last week, catching the ball across the middle against from his quarterback Jordan Hoy. But if you're Coach Schultz right now, you're telling your senior, look. We don't need those type of plays against Mississippi Valley. And, I mean, this is two miscues in a row. Mm -hmm. I mean, you also you have, you know, the, the hold on the return. That's a touchdown. Now, you know, your first play from scrimmage, or you're going backwards. And, but that's also the things that we talked about, you know, early games that you have to try to find out what's going on. Nice move by Wanza to break it outside. 
He made up all the difference and more. Excellent job there by Miles Wanza, the junior out of Houston, Texas. I talked about him being a speedy running back. Well, if we get a chance to see this replay, you can definitely see him break it to the outside, but he had enough speed and, and leverage to be able to get away from the first defender and pick up another two or three more yards. 13 yards on that pickup, but it is going to come up just a bit short. It's going to wind up bringing up a fourth and four. And they're going to punt it right away. Carmona, the kicker. Nice deep punch. Going to be called for a fair catch at the 35. And that's where Mississippi Valley State will go to work on their second possession. 647 left to play here in the first quarter. Student athletes achieving success in the classroom. Back to play here in Provo Humphrey Stadium in Beaumont, Texas, where again, no score early in this one. But Lemont, I think the bigger surprise has just been the number of the things that you thought would happen in the yeah. first game are actually <laughs> happening in the second game. That's the number of penalties that we've seen so far. Yeah, and Dan, you, you touched on it early in, the, in this quarter. Well, you, you talked about how the second game is when you really find your true identity as a team. And right now, both teams are still trying to figure out what they want to do offensively. Is it going to be a running team or passing the ball? Because I came into the nice ball game thinking that Mississippi Valley was going to try to open up their passing game. They rely a little bit more on their running game. And with Lamar, it just seemed like they're not in sync. They're not playing with that same swagger or confidence that they had last week versus Bethel University. Yeah, again, uh, if you're just joining us, Mississippi Valley State is a very young team. In fact, they have, gosh, I think 48 freshmen on this team. Here's yet another penalty, a holding foul. So it's going to negate that one. If you're not familiar, which I'm sure some folks aren't, uh, where uh, Mississippi Valley State is, it truly is in the Mississippi Delta. Mm -hmm. It's in Idabena, Mississippi. It's enrollment's about 2,400, so it's a smaller school. But still, they play Division I, SWAC, Southwestern Athletic Conference. University, uh, with great history and rich uh, uh, players, Hall of Fame players that oh, played yeah. there. Certainly For, does. Has a rich history of, of football. There's that option, and nice move by Jared Bryant. Fakes the option like he's going to pitch and turns it up and gets behind a couple of blockers. Makes a big gain that time and certainly picks up the first down. Excellent job there by Bryant. As you can see here in the replay, he was able to stretch the play out. You can see right there, quarterback gets the football, fakes play action pass, I mean play action keeper, and fakes the ball to the running back, was able to pick up some more positive yards in the first down. So Bryant right now realized his success is running the football. And now he puts it up in the air and overthrows his intended receiver. But, yeah, picking up 24 on that last play. Best field position of the ball game so far for the Delta Devils. As a look at DeJarrett Bryan, passed for 622 yards and four touchdowns last year and just playing a number of games. And last week he was 27 of 52 for 205 yards. So he will put it up yeah. despite the fact that we've seen it keep it on the ground for the majority of the time this afternoon. Going to do it again, but this time he won't do it. A fumble and it's recovered. It looks like by Lamar, that's the initial indication Reggie Bozeman down there on the bottom, but let's see who really came up with it. Looks like, in fact, it's going to be Dallas Martin recovering. Martin uh, out of Morelli, California, junior, 6'2", had seven tackles last week, and now his first fumble recovery of the season. Lamar taking over. In the first turnover tonight for Lamar Cardinals, they much needed turnover defensively. They have not got any penetration in the backfield, which allowed Mississippi Valley State to gain, gain a little bit of confidence by running the football. But then you see Lamar steps up. He was their front seven with Martin picking up that fumble and giving it back to their offense. First and 10 from the 45. Fakes goes over the top, in and out of the hands of his in re intended receiver that time and had a chance to hit Carmoni Green, but Green couldn't grab it. And Dan, on that last play, in my opinion, it looked like Green and the communication between Green and Hoy was off as Green was actually blocking the defensive back and Hoy decided to throw the football to him and just miscommunication on that last play. 
Cardinals actually going two backs in the backfield. The option, Hoy keeps it, turns it up, finds a blocker, and it's going to be pushed out of bounds, but not before he gets to the 38-yard line. Excellent job there by Hoy. Better be patient in the RPO-style play there. That's run pass option for Lamar Cardinals offense. You can see Hoy fakes the handoff, but he decides to keep it. As you can see in the replay right there, Hoy keeps the football, fakes it, picks up another three or four yards for the offense. That run pass off that run pass option opportunity for Lamar is going to be huge for him throughout this game. Busted play that time. And coming up to make the tackle is Eric Powell. The thing about the speed option, especially to the short side of the field, Dan, it makes the defense stay honest and play their assignment football. If you're not playing assignment football and discipline, Hoy will take advantage of that and maybe get a touchdown. Hoy looking across the middle, finds his receiver, and with making the quick catch and going down pretty quick on that one, but still quick enough that it looks like he probably is going to have more than enough for the first down is Jack Rowe. Look at the concentration by Rowe. Knowing that he goes across the middle on the quick slant, he's going to get hit by the secondary, and the safety came down and nailed Roy. Roy had the concentration to come in, bring in that reception for Lamar offense. Delta Devils showing the blitz, but back off. Going to give it to Wanza off the right side. He's going to pick up several. And what we're seeing now offensively for Lamar, they're starting to warm up here with the, some running plays to the side for all the speed options, but they're going back to their bread and butter and Miles Wanza running north and south. Seems to me we talked about fatigue might be an issue for Mississippi Valley State playing here in Beaumont, Texas on a hot and humid afternoon. Let's see how things plays out as they enter into the red zone. Yeah, you would think, though, I mean, being along the Gulf Coast, that they would be used to the humidity, maybe not quite as high there. Hoy on the rollout, looks down into the end zone, throws it up, missed by one, then missed by a second as looked like Carmoni Green had a shot at it, but couldn't pull it down, and it's going to be an incomplete. Yeah, Hoy tried to take advantage of the opportunity, throwing it high to his six-foot uh, receiver in green, trying to throw it up, lob it up, and maybe he makes a play in the air. But it's kind of risky as well. If you're a co if your coach hits, I mean, if you hit coach Mike Schultz, you're telling your quarterback, make sure you just throw it away so we can live for another down. Well, Lamar's showing a couple of different looks tonight. Last week it was single back offense. Got a couple of backs back there. Going to give it to Wanza, who tries to do pretty much a – just a cross up the middle. New formations, new opportunities, new plays. You can definitely tell uh, Coach Schultz inserted some new plays this week for uh, Mississippi Valley. And it seems like to me they want to do a lot of redirecting their offensive line, kind of confuse the linebackers right, right. when you're pulling the guards. New looks, new, new reads. Looks, yeah. yeah. Third and ten. Boy, that one almost got away from him. He manages to catch it. It's batted down. believe it's going to be intercepted. I believe that is going to be an interception, and it is Eric Powell. I think he was laying on his back, Lemont, and he just <laughs> fell in his arms. Huge break there for Mississippi Valley State. Unless they call it an incomplete, and it looks like there may be some call on the field. But the play got off to a bad start. Oh, yeah, right there. Nice play. Looked like Antoine Howard maybe with right. his hand up. But then, even though it's incomplete pass, I mean incomplete, and it's not an interception, but look at the penetration for Mississippi Valley. Their D-line established themselves way behind the line of scrimmage for Lamar. If you're a Lamar offensive line coach, you've got to be concerned about what you just saw in that last play. You can't allow a very strong offensive line like Lamar allow that penetration up front, which in return was able to knock down the football. So we're going to have a field goal attempt coming up, and the mark is going to be right at the 35. Looks like it's long enough, but it's going to be wide to the left. And if you remember last week, we saw a kicking change uh, when a point after was missed by Elvin Martinez, and then Bailey Giffen got the start. All right, we're going to have a timeout called 308 left to play in the first. No score. Well, if you look in the middle of your screen, the man with the big board is Mike Schultz, head coach for Lamar. He's in his third year 
And I think if you ask him, he would tell you he is an offensive-minded coach, and well, he should be. He spent years as an offensive coordinator. I mean, uh, I can I can name about six guys who probably wouldn't have had an NFL career if it hadn't been for Mike Schultz probably kind of leading the way for them yeah. and creating some offense. Uh, but 16 years as an offensive coordinator, Texas State, TCU, Illinois, Middle Tennessee State, his alma mater, Sam Houston, Texas, uh, UTEP, K-State. The man has been around, but again, has found a home, his first head job here at Lamar. And I have to commend Coach Schultz for the things he's done, not just in the community, but also recruiting here in the Beaumont area, the Golden Triangle areas, keeping guys th- going out to local prospects and bringing them back here to Lamar has been a huge impact for as this program. And also Coach Schultz, from an offensive standpoint, I mean, he can keep coaching them up from the Danian Thomason to anybody you can think of in the Texas region. So you know for a fact Coach Schultz knows what he's talking about offensively, but I really love how he's enhanced the recruiting process here for Lamar University. See, once again, the cards will shift. They, they'll go from a 4-2-5 a to a 3-3. Three, three. I mean, it's just amazing the different <laughs> sets you'll see on defense. Again, Mississippi Valley State content to run the ball and uh, going to come up short there. But Cardinals able to string it out. God, I mean, you know, if, if you're a one-dimensional offense, if it's run, 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 mm-hmm. as, a, as a former defensive lineman, what do you? I mean, does that get into your head? Do you start thinking, okay, it's it's going to be run every single time? It's just which direction? Well, as a former uh, outside linebacker, not D linebacker. Oh, you, well, I'm a D well, line well, guy, well. so I guess you know I'll, I'll go there for you. Well, but go ahead. <laughs> to as an outside linebacker, how does that get into your? <laughs> well, head? to answer your question, you start is, shooting gaps. Not shooting gaps. You just more disciplined on your assignment, and also you want to be able to stay home and and keep the outside edge. From my perspective, as an outside linebacker, but. You know they're one-dimensional, and you just bring your hard hat on every time you step on the field. They're going to run that football directly at you. You don't want to be that one player to give up that huge play to allow their running back to go the distance. So Lamar's doing a really good job by switching up the fronts and giving their off- I mean, their defensive line opportunity to be able to penetrate in the backfield. You know, as far as Mississippi Valley State being one-dimensional, because right now Brian is not really – he has happy feet. He hasn't had a chance to really settle in the, in the pocket to be able to throw the football down the field. Any an opportunity he gets, he's taken off and running. Yeah, he's only thrown twice, but at this point, he's run the ball six times for 47 yards. So he's probably their leading rusher. Uh, he is their leading yeah. rusher, sure. But at the same time, Hoy is Lamar's leading rusher. Yeah, yeah, but he's also trying to throw the ball down the field at times. He's trying to find green down I think the field. He's, I think he's only – well, he's six. Yeah. He's thrown six times, three of six. It's half, half of his passes. One – 30 left to go here in the first quarter. Again, neither team having a whole lot of success on the offense. Nobody into the red zone. Oh, that's a nice hit, but didn't wrap him up. Coming up to make that first initial hit is Michael Lawson. And Lawson's but it was all body, no arms. <laughs> oh, he's a big play, play guy. He's run down here, and he's going to give that big thump. And, and Coach Schultz, you can see in that shot there, he is very impressed with Lawson. He had that punt return called back, which would have helped them get some points early in this first quarter. But Lawson has been very active defensively for Lamar Cardinals. I like the fact that he's not afraid to get his nose in there and mix it up with the running back. First and ten, the fifth first down for the Delta Devils in this first quarter. You know, it does make it a little more difficult, though. I mean, when you start running these kind of plays now where you, you really – I mean, from ground level, it's hard to tell, did he put it in there or did he keep it? Yeah. You know, as, yeah. as you're trying to make and follow what's going on from the field of view. And if you're a really good dual threat quarterback and you can sell that zone read look, yeah, it makes it so much easier for you to Freezes be able to, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. You want to slow down the defensive line, but also you want to freeze the linebackers, especially the inside line. But, does, you know, I guess, I guess how – my question is, how effective can it be if you're not going to throw the ball? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you if your mix is so imbalanced that it's you've only thrown it twice when you've run a number of plays. All right, that's the end of the quarter. We're going to go take a break. Again, no score. Lamar, Mississippi Valley State, going at it here in Beaumont. Report, no Bluetooth, no anything. 
Exactly. Grandpa had Coming off a game last week that saw Lamar score 65 points and Mississippi Valley State scored 20. Neither one of them able to get it into the end zone in the first quarter. And by the way, the Cardinals playing host, they're the number 23 ranked team in the nation according to College Sports Madness poll. First time in the history of the program they've been ranked in the top 25. Congratulations to Lamar for cracking the top 25, but right now, you know, recapping the first quarter, they're not playing as a top 25 team. Very sluggish offensively, offensively, not being able to be consistent by moving the ball down the field. Mississippi Valley State has been their own worst enemy as far as with their own penalties. But it's more or less Lamar's playing down to the competition instead of playing up like we saw last week offensively against Bethel University. Well, they better get ready to play up because next week they have to travel to Texas A&M. In the last take I on checked. the Aggies, and yeah. the Aggies lost today, so yeah. you know they're not going to be happy. But it is a money game for Lamar. Take a look at the replay here and see what happened. Looks like it's a false start. Yep, believe on the right side. Looked like the tackle moved. That would be Nari Mussolino. It's going to bring up a third and ten. 48-yard line, quick drop, tries to set up a screen, but Lamar did a good job of reading that one. Penetration that time by Brandon Arnold, number 99 there. Check out the replay here. Watch Dallas Martin, number 10. Sniff is out right there. The linebacker closed in, almost missed the tackle, but excellent job. Good read by Dallas Martin. He's been very active in the first half. He's able to close in and bring down the running back. Yeah, Brandon Arnold from Spring Branch helping them out, making sure that they're stopped for a loss, and that's going to bring up a punting situation, some shifting going on. Don't think Lamar is any confused by that, though. Rush the punter. Punt's going to go sideways, out of bounds. Good field position. For Lamar taking over on their own 25. Early in the second quarter again. Again, coming back out, Lamar, not a whole lot of success uh, running the ball. I mean, they, it's not that they haven't been able to run it. It's just that it seems like every time they do, there's some kind of a penalty that brings them back the other direction. This time, Wanza caught in the backfield. Nice we, play that time. Coming up to make the stop, number 52, Deion Reed. And then we talked about Mississippi Valley State being one-dimensional. But you got to say the same thing about Lamar. They have not really thrown the ball down the field. I mean, a couple of quick slants across the middle. But, uh, you know, Hoy has really been their offensive weapon here in this first half. And Miles Wanza is not playing as much uh, like we anticipate him to come into this game as far as running the football successfully down the field. Air that one out to try to hit Kenny Allen. Overthrown. First time, really, they've gone deep in this game. That was the first shot. I mean, right on cue for them to go deep. And, and you know, again, miss, miss opportunity, incomplete pass. If you're Coach Schultz, I, I'm assuming he's trying to work out some kinks and trying to figure out his system. However, he got to be a little frustrated with what he's seeing offensively from his team. Well, he tries to go downfield, tries to find Case Robinson dragging across the middle, but it's tight end. Can't hang on to it, so another incomplete pass. So for Hoy, struggling, throwing the ball, three of eight for 28 yards here in the first half. Give credit to Mississippi Valley State defensively, especially their secondary was able to stay home, knowing that they saw Case Robertson coming across the field from his post route, was able to stay around him, even though that pass was not completed from Hoy to Robertson. Mississippi Valley State played solid in that last three and out. So the punt is away for Lamar. It's going to be fair caught at the 42-yard line. Elvin Martinez and uh, Enrique Carmona, kickers from last year, also added into the mixes. Bailey Griffin will take a break, come back with more. 
All right, Mississippi Valley going to work here, and you can see good gainer there just swinging it to the outside. Nice catch made and yards picked up by Jarius Clayton, who had four catches last week against Tennessee State. And, Dan, I really feel right now something big is going to happen, either a huge turnover for Lamar or Mississippi Valley State is going to finally get their offense clicking during this drive. Well, there's a pretty good click right there as DeJerick Bryant just keeps it right up the middle. But, again, it's what we were talking about. If you're one-dimensional, hard to do that. You set it up with a pass, then you yeah. run it up the middle. Now you're making them think a little bit up front. And Bryant has been a one-man band for offensively for Mississippi Valley throughout this first half. You know, running north and south, east and west, he's trying to find some kind of confidence as well as motivation to keep his offense on the field. you got to like what you see out of the young man versus a very aggressive Lamar defense. Dwayne Barnett going back to the outside, finds his intended receiver, finally pushed out of bounds at the 11-yard line that time. Again, it's Jarius Clayton. They're, they're really stacking them on the yeah. left side, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. They're stacking them on the left side. They want to spread out Lamar defensively in their secondary. As you saw in that last play there, quick pass to the outside. Let your playmakers make plays in space. Excellent job there. That way, that way it builds confidence for Bryant. I believe we have a flag down on the play. See what the call is from the field. So the penalty against Lamar had a player on the field, but it's declined, obviously. There'll be a first down for Mississippi Valley State at the 12-yard line. Deepest penetration by either team so far in the game. And if you're Coach Schultz right now, you're concerned for your defense defensively because they, you know, you can't sneak guys on the field, but their back is against the ropes against a very aggressive offense right now from the, Del the Delta Devils. Nice reach in that time to knock the ball down by Cameron Hayes. Because he did have, an, a, for a moment there, an open look. I think we may have yet another flag. And we do. So they're going to call pass interference against Lamar. And so an automatic first down. Again, if your coach shows defensively, you're concerned about your defense because they're on the ropes. Two huge penalties there in the red zone, which now gives uh, Mississippi Valley State a huge opportunity. Watch Bryant. Maybe he goes off to the left-hand side for a rushing touchdown. Well, you called it, but didn't go right, went left. But still, exact same thing. Huge hole, too. Just walks into the end zone for the first score of the evening. And I just felt it. I felt like Mississippi Valley will find a way to get going offensively. Give credit to their quarterback in Bryant. You can see him right there running to the sideline. Excellent job leading his team down the field. It started with the running game, and it finished with a running game. A rushing, the first rushing touchdown tonight for Mississippi Valley State. So in for the PAT again to give the visitors the first draw of blood here in uh, Provo Humphrey Stadium. PAT is up and good. And again, to this point, uh, Mississippi Valley State, give them credit. They've come in and they have not been intimidated at all by the crowd or by being on the road. 11-13 left to play in the first half. Well, we mentioned a while ago Mike Schultz for Lamar, offensive-minded. Well, Vincent Dancy should be defensive-minded. It's a lot of what he's done. 33-year-old head coach for Mississippi Valley State, defensive coordinator for three years for this team before they named him the 18th or the 17th coach of the program back in January of 2018. So it is uh, time for him to shine former player at Jackson State. So he knows the swag. And he has, to, he has to like what he's seeing thus far from his team, being able to rally and find some kind of spark offensively. you got to give credit to his quarterback. And Bryant was able to lead their team down the field for the first rushing touchdown. 
this afternoon. So if you're Lamar, either that situation that just took place against your defense is going to light a fire in your offense, or you're just going to lay down and allow Mississippi Valley State to continue to build their confidence in this first half. If you're Hoy, you got to get something going offensively. you got to be able to find that playmaker to be able to make a huge break. Toss to Wanza. Wanza is going to push it out after uh, doing duty as the kick returner. Picks up about eight yards on that first carry. And you look at statistically, uh, Mississippi Valley State has had the upper hand you know, whether it comes to first downs, yards rushing, uh, with everything with the exception of maybe passing, they have had the upper hand. And also what they also have the upper hand on too, Dan, as well as time of possession. Right now, Mississippi Valley is dominating the time of possession on the road against Lamar. You know, Mississippi Valley has, what, 13 minutes of time of possession with the football, so they control the clock where Lamar has less than six minutes. Mason Sykes hauling it in for a nice catch that time. The tight end, some good yards. In fact, uh, good for seven and a first down. Whoops, almost a missed pitch that time. Nice job stringing it out and finally coming up with the tackle that time for Mississippi Valley State is Valmy Swainer, linebacker. And like that last play right there, Dan, you can definitely tell the timing is off between Hoy and his running backs because that pitch was like a delayed pitch, which allowed Mississippi Valley State defensive linemen to be able to run ver- I mean, lateral and make a play. So if you're, you know, Jordan Hoy, you got to get the ball out of your hand a lot quicker and give it to your playmakers. There's one of them right there breaking to the outside, finally forced out of bounds, but not before he picks up good yards is Kirkland Banks. Last week he had five catches. And picks up a big one this time for Lamar. Excellent job there by Jordan Hoy finding Banks on the slant route. Watch him get away from the defensive backs right there. Great block there to knock down a DB. You got to like the fact that Hoy is trying to find some kind of playmakers in Kirkland Bank. 17 yards, first down. One's uh, out of the backfield. Good for seven. And then here comes Lamar's offense. I mean, finally they get something, some consistent drive. Sustaining their drives is the most important part for them right now, you know, in the second quarter if they're going to try to get back into this game. Can that offensive line win up the battle up front to allow Hoy to be able to find his playmakers? Fakes it to Wanza, shoots it off the left side. Nice catch that time in a crowd by Kirkland Banks again. I'm going to tell you why that play was so successful for Kirtland Banks. He was able to focus in on Hoy early and often, even though he had a defensive back draped over his shoulders. As you can see here in this replay, watch the blocking up front, which allows Hoy to be able to have a quick release. Hoy, even though his his jersey was getting pulled from the backside, had the focus and concentration to bring in that reception and get his team into the red zone. So first and goal to go. Get one is. back. Wanza breaks it outside. Might have been able to dance in the end zone. Got a flag thrown in the backfield. Discussion going on among Jim Campbell, the back judge. I should say Albert Bryant, the back judge. Face mask is the call. And that'll be half the distance to the goal. That's our referee for the day, Vidal Jones. Huge break there for Lamar. Miscue defensively for Mississippi Valley. Can they punch it in if you're Lamar Cardinals? If I'm Coach Schultz, I want the ball in my best playmaker hands. That's my quarterback in Jordan Hoy. Good call. Keeper up the middle, just faked it. Pulled it out and put it in the end zone. Hoy for the first touchdown of the afternoon for the home team. And just like that, Lamar's back in this football game with that touchdown run. Give credit to Jordan Hoy. He came out with a better focus and attention to be able to move his offense down the field. I like how they inserted the running game, which got some positive yards, but they went to Kirkland Bank as well, going across the middle, which helped him get in the Well, I was going to ask, too, that slap in the face, you know, sometimes brings you into focus a little <laughs> bit. You know, when the other team scores yeah. before you do at home, kind of wakes you up, shakes you out of the doldrums, and apparently good enough because we're all knotted now at seven with just over eight left to play in the half.
So after a lackluster first quarter, all of a sudden these two teams come out and spark some <laughs> offense, and we're all tied up at seven. In fact, Lamar goes 70 yards on that last drive in eight plays for their score. And, Dan, we talked about off air. Sometimes it might take a, your opponent smacking you in your face for a while <laughs> to be able to wake up here at home in front of your home fans. Lamar did an excellent job by starting with the running game, but also inserting the passing game to Kirkland Banks, which allowed him to get in the red zone. And you have your dual-threat quarterback in Jordan Hoy to be able to finish off with a two-yard touchdown run. Yeah, and I think the other part of that equation may be the longer you can keep the defense on the field, as hot as it is, the more you can take advantage of. You know, instead of a three and out, four and out, five and out, if you can run seven, eight plays, eventually it catches up. Yeah. Kick, as you saw, was out of bounds. So that will give an improvement of field position to Mississippi Valley State. So if you're Lamar and you've just come off and you've just been scored on, what's happening on the sidelines while your offense is on the field? So if you're Lamar and your offense is on the field, you just got scored on defensively, your defense coach is trying to go over some plays and some of the schemes that he saw that worked and some that didn't work, but you want to tell them, stop the run. And as you saw in that last play right there, it has to be a group effort. Guys got to run around and make plays. It can't be ISO, ISO individual tackles. Right. Guys got to make plays together. Well, you saw, you may have seen Darian Wilson, number two, great penetration that time across the line. He missed the tackle, but still kind of disrupted things. You saw him right there. Yeah, you can definitely tell Lamar won the battle on that one right there up front, getting penetration behind the line of scrimmage, which forced Brian to be able to take off running. But the closing speed of their secondary and their linebacker, which helped yeah. that play on that backside. Got to have some reads and speed. So Mississippi Valley, go back at it. It'll be second and eight. But it's going to wind up being more like third and three. Nice pickup that time by Barnett. Hey, Lamar, you got to find a way to get a turnover. You got to strip the ball away from him, knock the ball out. If you know Mississippi Valley, then it's one dimension of running the football. Someone has to go in there and rip the ball out of something to try to get that ball to pop out. And that's a really spread out front line, isn't it? Oh, yeah. There's that pass you were talking about and going to be caught. And it's going to be caught and then out pretty quickly that time by Jarius Clayton, who, as far as I know, has only been the only successful. I guess that's not true. I believe Totten caught one catch as well, but it was for minus three. But it'll be good enough for a first down. And I talked about time of possession right now. You can definitely tell Mississippi Valley is winning that battle. Look how patient they are at the line of scrimmage. They're not rushing on the road. They're just trying to focus in what play is called from the sideline, which allows the defense to be able to take a breath. To Derek Bryan puts it in, but keeps it right up the middle and is rolling. And another big one on the keeper. I mean, really – just not even testing the outside. He's just going right up the middle. And why would you if you're having so many guys miss tackles on that last play? You can see Brian has enough confidence to cut back against the grain and go in the middle. Lamar had two or three players miss him and just not wrap up. They had too much arm tackling, Dan. you got to be able to bring your whole body behind you. Brian is fast enough to get through those arm tackles and pick up the first down. Good job up front, too, by the offensive line for Valley. There's a look at Bryant. Again, a big week last week. Four of six in the air, but also 10 carries for 68 yards here in the first half. And Mississippi Valley State's going to call a timeout. They want to talk about it. 551 left to play in the half. So let's talk about their strategy. You know, when you get to this point, it can't be, okay, what's next? We've got to think about three or four plays down the line, you know, kind of maybe we're setting something up here. Oh, yeah, they're definitely trying to set something up offensively if you're Mississippi Valley. You're coaching right now. You're telling the guys, hey, let's go back to what we know, which is running the football. It's been working for us thus far in this first half. O-line right now, catch a breather because we might have to go consecutive plays back-to-back -back where you might not be able to get any hydration or get any water. So if you're Mississippi Valley State, you're putting the ball in your best player here, and that's their quarterback in Bryant. Now, now, I was going to say, on the defensive yeah. side, you, you got to talk about reads, right? Oh, yeah. 
not just reads. Just make sure you make the tackle. It's too many missed tackles. We saw that one play when Bryant ran through three defenders for Lamar because they was arm tackling. So it's just inconsistency on the defensive side of the ball. And it just feels like offensively they're starting to get going with Hoy with that touchdown. But the defense, they got to be able to get Mississippi Valley off the field. They are continuing to kill the game with time of possession in this first half. Defensive ends turn it in. Linebackers follow it up. And making the tackle that time is Dallas Martin, adding to his total this afternoon from his linebacker position. He's been very active throughout this first half, Dallas Martin, making plays in the backfield, running down plays from the side. I mean, he's just doing he's doing a really good job from the linebacker position. Clock continues to run, closing in on five minutes. Second and nine. Trips out to the left. And instead, Bryant goes to the right and his single receiver out on that side, but does make it a completion. Definitely, I mean, with this situation right now, it's definitely helping uh, Mississippi Valley offense. You can see right there with the trips to the left, they go to the single coverage on the back side, man-to-man -man coverage. You want to take advantage of that. Lamar's playing all press common, press defense. They're not really on the line of scrimmage, which allowed Brown to get the pass all to his receiver. Well, that's tough that time. I mean, he had the, you saw that. If yeah. you watch the play develop, uh, Dallas Martin's right there, but he's got to play his man, you know, and he's got to, he's got to push the ball outside. You can definitely see in the replay there. I talked about early, Dan, how when you run the speed option to the short side of the field, you have to play assignment football. You cannot give up your assignment because if that be the case, Brian can take it distance. We know he has the speed to be able to break it loose. So good job there by Martin to be able to play his assignment, which forced Brian to run out of bounds. Still going to be enough for a first down, so it'll be first and ten from the 31 in motion back the other direction. But there's the pitch to the same man that was in motion, but he's going to be disrupted. That's Jarius Clayton, the wide receiver. Not much of a gain that time. Excellent job there by Lamar's defensive player, be able to come down, make him play. It just felt like if he didn't make that play, it could have went the distance. Mississippi Valley is doing a lot of redirecting with their man in motion to kind of trick Lamar defensively. They go back to the back side with a speed option. Good closing speed there by the defensive back. Jared Alden coming up and making the stop for Lamar. Does any team run from the huddle anymore? <laughs> I mean, I, very few, right? Very few. Nice play that time. Getting up into the face is Daniel Crosley, the senior out of DeRitter, Louisiana. Haven't called his name a lot today. Daniel Crosley is one of the top defensive lineman in the conference, one of the top players defensively for Lamar. Haven't said his name a lot because what we're seeing right now, tempo. Uh, Mississippi Valley is doing a really good job. They're doing the reverse of what we normally see with teams with the upstyle tempo offense. They're saying, look, we have the momentum and we're controlling the clock. We're going to dictate the outcome of this first half. And right now they're just being patient and taking their time and running the football. Third and 11, rolls to his right, looks downfield, puts it up. It's a crowd. It's going to be picked off. Coming back the other way is Michael Lawson. Lawson will be brought down at the 22, but a big stop for the Cardinal defense. Huge turnover right there by their playmaker and impact player defensively, Lawson. Michael Lawson has been so active in that secondary for Lamar throughout this first half, making plays coming down, making plays. And on the running back, as you can see in this replay, Picking up a huge interception for Lamar Cardinal's defense. A rollout pass there by Bryant. Just throws it up in the air. Look at Lawson. Catches the ball at the highest point for the interception. Yeah, amazing. Four on one. Four <laughs> white shirts, one green shirt. He threw it in there anyway. And Lawson comes up with the interception. So Lamar offense starts deep in their own territory. Again, let's see if what they can do with three minutes left in the half. And it's enough time for their offense to be able to go down the field and get some points. Boy, trying to break it outside. He's going to get a, maybe seven. Looked like there was a lot more out there to get. Smart play, though, there. I mean, he could have forced it. but he and, he, just, yeah. and he stops the clock. Yeah. Ball to the 
in the backfield with him this time is Darian Reed, or Randall, I should say, out of Navasota. Going to give to the man in motion. And he fumbles the football, and it's going to go back the other way. As Kirkland Banks fumbles the football, going down to the ground. And they are wrestling for it. But we'll have to wait and see. I'm pretty sure they're going to wind up giving this one to Mississippi Valley. They can't get them separated. <laughs> Whoever comes up with the football will decide who has it. It looks like Kirkland Banks do not want to give up that football, but it's going to the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. Kirkland Banks, another one of those fumbles last week. Yeah if you remember, in a crucial situation. Watching this replay here, the handoff to the receiver. Wide receiver around, comes around. Well, watch this play on the backside. Watch this hit there. Jarls out the football. Kirkland Banks tries his best to get it back. Good job there for the defense for Mississippi Valley. Uh, Isaiah Latham, who made it really didn't even make the initial hit. It was more like Banks ran into yeah. him. But it still jarred the ball. As you see, we have a discussion going on with the officials, see what they've come up with here. Again, clock at 2.39. Here's the call. We're going to feel the fumble by the offense. Recovered simultaneously by the offense. By rule, the punch of the offense, first down. Wow. Wow, simultaneous possession, so it goes to the offense. It's the old, the old baseball <laughs> trick. Tie goes to the runner. Yeah. Huge break there for Lamar. Huge offense. break. So they'll retain possession. And not only that, they pick up a first down. Yeah. Pick up a first down and continue some and try to pick up where they left off offensively. Can Kirkland Banks hold on to the football now? I'm pretty sure he will. Well, I'm I'm I'll be interesting to see if it with two thirty nine what kind of offense they choose to run here. Got Wanza. And Randall in the backfield. <clears throat> it's interesting in this set. I mean, the tight end really doesn't play on the line until he shifts, and he's still not on the line. Going to swing it out to Wanza. He'll get maybe two yards for he's bumped out of bounds. And right now what we're seeing from Mississippi Valley, Dan, is they're not – feeling threatened at all deep from Lamar. So they're going to play about nine guys in the box, and, and Lamar wants to do the play-action pass, but it's not – if you're going to do the play-action pass, you got to throw the ball down the field. I mean, at least take a shot. Right. you got to make them respect it, right? Absolutely. Second and nine. Man in motion is Banks, but this time they're going to give it to Randall. You'll see the pride coming up there. At the bottom of the pile there is number 93, Antoine Howard out of Cincinnati, Ohio. A freshman, 6'2", 315. Wow. That's a big kid. That's, yeah. That's a lot of Antoine Howard. <laughs> you see him right there playing nose guard right in the middle. We mentioned they got a lot of young guys on this team. Knocked away in the backfield that time as he tried to crow across the middle, knocking it down for the that the Devils is Jametta Shaw. Just look at the confidence right now in the secondary from Mississippi Valley. They are not feeling threatened at all down the field. Got some help there by pulling the receiver down, but the referee did not call it. Give credit to Mississippi Valley State defense. So Lamar, uh, ineffective on that drive after – Sustaining one for eight plays and 70 yards in the prior possession. Can't come up with much, and they're going to have to give it away with some time left here in the first half. Going to be fair caught at the 23-yard line, and that's where the Delta Devils will go to work. Yeah, I mean, if you're the Delta Devils right now and you're the head coach, you want to be able to say, we have an opportunity to put some points on the board. Let's get back to the basics and running the football. Hopefully – that running attack can open up the passing game and Brian can find a receiver. Well, with field. the exception of the interception, yeah. you know, they, they moved the ball in their last possession. 
So here comes the offense for Mississippi Valley State. This is one of those uh, drills that every team goes through when you get to that, you know, time situation, the two-minute drill. You know, you got to work it down as fast as you can if you want to score. Are you going to put it in the air or are you going to be content to run it and see what you can do? Well, obviously, they're going to run it, but when you pick up big chunks like that <laughs> and, of course, going to stop the clock to move the sticks because of first down, Good pickup that time. Just straight ahead running by Dwayne Barnett. Yeah, and their running game is really their their plus. On the road, taking out the fans, I mean, very quiet in the first half, controlling the clock. That's what they want to do. They want. I thought coming into this game, Mississippi Valley was going to spread them out and throw the football. But they changed up their game plan here in Beaumont, Texas, relying on the running game. Their offensive line doing a phenomenal job by opening up the running lanes, not just for Bryant, but also they running back. Yeah, I mean, good point because last week, uh, DeJerick Bryant, the quarterback, threw the ball 52 times yeah. against Tennessee State. He certainly has not thrown it that many times tonight. In fact, uh, at this point, he has only attempted nine passes. He's five of nine for 32 yards. Oh, nice play in the backfield that time. Coming in to make the stop is Darian Wilson, six-footer. Number two, Sorry right at 300 pounds, and he used all of it as <laughs> leverage that time. Yeah, Wilson out of Missouri City, Texas, a senior. Looking to have a huge season this year for the Lamar Cartman's up front. You can see right here penetration in the backfield. Boom. You're not going anywhere, said Mr. Wilson, as he brings down the running back. Yeah, he took Zacchaeus Sias, the left guard, with him when he made the tackle. So we got a timeout on the field, a quick timeout. You know, with 41 seconds, again, conversations being had in both of those huddles. There's some of the students who have come out for the game on this Saturday evening. In the new student section? It is, and you know what? I heard uh, the athletic director, Marco Bourne, say uh, earlier this week, first time he had ever seen LU students get painted up for a game. Yeah. So they're here for the second week in a row. They better get their fill, though, because the Cardinals are going to hit the road for the next couple of weeks yeah. and, in fact, won't come back home until their homecoming game. So Lamar will be at A&M next week, and then they'll be at Southeastern before they come back on the 21st against SFA here at home. So they have two. Well, they have a huge challenge here in the second half against Mississippi Valley State trying to slow down their running game. Then they go on the road and play in College Station Ooh. against a very aggressive very Aggies angry. Off. Oh, yeah, they're going to be angry <laughs> too. Very angry. Yeah. Aggies offense, yeah, no doubt. 41 left. Bryant's going to be pulled down from behind. Looks like Daniel Crosby in there. Crosby, a second team all Southland Conference selection last year. Had 15 sacks, or nine sacks, got one now this year. Look at the penetration there by Lamar's defense. Setting the tone on the other side of the offensive line, which is most important, but you can see Daniel Crosley in there making first contact for Lamar's defense. Another timeout call. Might as well use him up, right? Yeah. Or the end of the half. Can't take him with you. Don't, can't carry him over. Again, a lot of penalties called in this ball game, but again, not an unexpected either. Nine penalties in this first half. Mississippi Valley State called for five, Lamar for four. And it is a punting situation for the fourth and six. No real pressure put on. Lamar will let it bounce, goes back the other way, but will be downed. Pretty shallow kick, actually, so Lamar could get some pretty good field possession, but with 26 seconds left, roll the dice, go for the long one, or why not? be I mean, content to run it out. 
Why not? I mean, take a couple shots down the field. You could catch a huge break. And you have a comp competition right now with your kicker, so it would be a great opportunity for them to get. Well, you're right. I mean, why not set yourself up for at least, I mean, last week we saw Giffen come in and hit a 46-yarder. So if you can get a couple of shots, set yourself up for at least three points. Hoy in trouble. It's going to wind up throwing that one out of bounds. As you mentioned, the secondary for Mississippi Valley has done a great job. Kind of just taking away the whole wide receiver core. I mean, just if it wasn't for Kirkland Banks catching a couple of slants, I mean, for the most part, it's been you know missing in action throughout this first half. Couple wideouts right and left. Hoy looks down the field wide open. There it is. His Banks again. He gets out of bounds. 16 seconds left. Good pitch and catch there between Hoy and Kirkland Banks. Her Banks got right behind the secondary. He was able to do that post out route, which allowed him to free himself up for the B open for Hoy to find him for the reception. Quick snap. Hoy looks. Going to be a screen set up in the middle and not going to pick up, but will get the ball into the middle of the field. And maybe that was the whole idea. Set your kicker up in the middle with good position. And if that's the case, then Bailey Giffen will come out. Well, we talk about a competition, and everybody's always competing for their spot. We're going to see a competition right here with this kicker. Well, yeah, Giffen last week uh, came in, but he only came in after Elvin Martinez, who was a pre-All-Southland Conference selection, missed a point after attempt. And we'll see exactly where we're going to mark this one at. Mr. President. It is. President of the university, Lamar's president, on hand, as always, for what seems like all of their sporting events. So the spot is going to be at the 38 and 10. It's 48. It's up and it's wide. Not even a chance on that one. So after last week's success from 46, comes up empty, and the Cardinals will go into the half. Deadlocked with Mississippi Valley State at seven. Although we'll still have to have a change of possession, at least one snap. So Lamar accomplished what they wanted to do with that possession, which was to set up the field goal. Just didn't get it quite close enough to make it a chip shot. No, not at all. I mean, you got to be able to say we had an opportunity to put some points on the board, but you did not get it. If you're Lamar and your head coach, Mike Schultz, you got to regroup, refocus the team, and come out playing a better second half. All right. Halftime here in Beaumont at Provo Sumfrey Stadium. And, again, we're all deadlocked at 7. Come back. We'll look at some of the stats, check some of the highlights as we roll on some Southland Conference football action from Beaumont, Texas. Back live in Beaumont, Texas, Provo Sumfrey Stadium, Southland Conference football. I'm Dan Gresham along with Lemont Williams. And I got to tell you, I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, this is a team that scored Lamar 65 points last week, granted against a smaller NAIA team. But also on the other side, Mississippi Valley State, uh, they came back, scored 20 points against Tennessee State. But both of these offenses look pretty sluggish in the first half. Yeah, Lamar started off real poorly offensively, didn't get anything going. Had a few miscues, you know, with the offensive line as well as penalties. But you got to give credit to Mississippi Valley State. In Texas, in a huge environment, they came out fighting late in the second quarter, put up some points. Then they're controlling the clock with time of possession. Let's talk a little bit about penalties. Uh, yeah. I think at least 10 by the time the half yeah. is over. You know, generally speaking, a lot of people expect that to come in the first game. Mm -hmm. 
and the improvement to come in the second game. But it's still early in the year, right? Absolutely. Teams are still trying to find their true identity in the 2019 season. Right now, Lamar is struggling here in the first half. Hopefully, Coach Schultz can get his guys going in the second half. But it's a lot of football to play here tonight. You know, we also talk a lot about special teams, and special teams have come into play. Lamar had a touchdown uh, return from Kirkland Banks that winds up being wiped out, again, because of a penalty. Penalties, penalties, penalties. Miscues will kill your momentum and confidence, regardless if you're home or not. And right now, we saw that in the first half. Lamar had that opportunity to punt return, but it was negated due to a penalty. All right, so we're going to take a break. When we come back on the other side, we'll show you some of those numbers, and you'll see what we're talking about when it comes to penalties. We'll also get ready for the second half as we continue against Southland Conference football here on ESPN. Love cars. Being old is kind of cool. Obviously, a lot of conversation during the football season centers around the athletes and the time that they spend, oh, we went to camp, we've been (laughs) there, we've been two a days. But a lot of times what goes unnoticed is the fact that Lamar band and marching bands all over the country, they've also been to camp, you know, before they start. And this is their chance to come out and uh, show their style and their presentation of what they've been working on for months. So. Again, Lamar, sure, they're glad to have football back, but with it comes all kinds of other peripheral things yeah. that happen, and one of them being the band, of course. Always, I miss that a little yeah. bit, I'll be honest with you. We used to see football broadcasts, and at halftime, you would literally see bands perform, and now it seems that we take it up with other things. So it's good to give them a little time on the air there. Lamar works very hard, the, and all the marching bands mm-hmm. do across the country. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the stats in the first half. Anything yeah. jump out at you that surprises you? <laughs> Yeah, the fact that Mississippi Valley State had over 100 yards rushing the football in the first half. They came out with a solid game plan. I thought they was going to pass the football throughout the first half, but they changed their game plan up, and they've been consistent with it. I mean, they've been persistent also running the football down the field against Lamar. All right, let's take a look at those stats if we can. We'll talk a little bit about them. But what Lamar did is they countered with the pass. While Mississippi Valley State, yeah, they rushed for the majority of their yards, Lamar passed for the majority of theirs. And you can see in the end, it actually almost balances out. Actually, Lamar, 179 total versus uh, Mississippi Valley with 161. Yeah, because Lamar couldn't get anything going as far as running the football. They had to throw the football to Kirkland Banks to be able to set them up to get their first touchdown in the first half. That RPO, run pass option, is not playing well for Lamar in the first half. But I'm pretty sure Coach Schultz is going to go back to it with his dual threat quarterback in Jordan Hoyt. Any surprise at all time of possession here? Because in Lamar, it's uh, five minutes less yeah. than yeah. Mississippi Valley State. That's huge right there, time of possession. Mississippi Valley used it to their advantage, slowing down the defense as well as slowing down the tempo Let's control the clock. All right, see if we can get some highlights lined up for you. We'll come yeah. back and take a look at those as we continue here from Provost Humphrey Stadium live in Beaumont, Texas. We mentioned the halftime activities going on. We've had some great Lamar University band and also some special Olympic kids who've been having a great time with some flag football entertaining the crowd here. The second home game of the uh, season for 2019-2020 here at Lamar University. Again, Dan Gresham along with Lemont Williams. Uh, Got a couple of highlights we want to look at, but we were just talking amongst ourselves. This won't take long. No, not at all because, you know, we're very – Stall out first half. I mean, both teams figured each other out, trying to figure each other out in the first yeah. quarter. Eventually scored touchdowns in the second quarter. Yeah, and uh, let's take a look at some of the action. We'll pick things up with Lamar and uh, really had to come up with a big play to stop a drive by Mississippi Valley State. Yeah, you can definitely see the interception there by Lamar's defensive back, Michael Lawson, who was very active and made some impact plays throughout the first half for Lamar Cardinal. So Lamar, that comes after Lamar is scored on. So they get the opportunity and finally get it into the end zone, and it is Hoy on the keeper. Yeah, Jordan Hoy was able to get into that red zone, led by Kirkland Banks with the pass across the middle, was set them up in the red zone. Jordan Hoy is trying to find a way to stay fighting for this Lamar offense. Hopefully that momentum carries over in the second half. Meanwhile, for Mississippi Valley State, as we mentioned, neither one of these teams really motored much in the first quarter. But check this out. This is a guy who really uh, did Jarek Bryant last week 
was throwing the football 52 <laughs> times. This week, it's mostly on the ground. And Brian has been a one-man band for the Mississippi Valley State offense, you know, throughout this first half or going into the second half. Being able to use his legs and run successfully, hopefully he can do that in the second half. All right, we'll find out. we got your second half coming up for you. Stay with us as we've got uh, college football on a Saturday night. Well, beautiful uh, sunset here in Beaumont. It's a nice shot there. And you're looking at Provost Humphrey Stadium, which is located on the south side of town and home of the Lamar Cardinals. In fact, this uh, stadium has been in use since 1964. Wow. Yep. Capacity, 16,000. Don't think we'll be there today, but... I think they had about 7,200 last week for the first game, which was a Thursday night game. And, of course, uh, tonight got a pretty good crowd on hand, both students and locals, alumni. Great night for some football. Did you play on turf yeah. your entire career? <laughs> yeah. I did. Well, I oh, yeah. laugh. I, I didn't. Uh, but... Uh, this is Matrix Turf that they play on here at Provost Humphrey. And, of course, got a makeover when Lamar brought football back. And um, it's been in place. You see some of the alumni, some of the parents, some of the fans up in the stands coming out. And some changes this year for the first time in Provost Humphrey history. They're actually selling alcoholic beverages or at least beer in the stands. <laughs> Which is good. I mean, uh, well, certainly on a hot night, not a bad thing. So, if you remember, first half, Mississippi Valley State won the toss and elected to kick. So, Lamar will kick off to start the second half. And that would be a nice pooch kick there to get things started. And we are underway. That is, again, Bailey Giffen, the kicker. And Mississippi Valley State University goes to work at their own 24-yard line. Again, to Jarek Bryant, the starting quarterback, number 16. In the backfield, John Derrick Smith, the running back, senior 5'10", out of Greenwood, Mississippi. Up front, James Lofton, Zakia Sias, Shendedrick Ross, Kujan uh, Spradley, Jaquan Spradley, sorry, Jaquan Spradley out of Tampa, and Neri Muslimino out of Panama City and on the to, offensive line. And, Dan, let's see what they're going to do with that run pass option. And good penetration there by Wilson. He started off when he left off in the first half. Wilson be able to get penetration, and that's what the Carton is going to need up there up front from their defensive, defensive nose guard. Interesting, because you look at defensive linemen today, and, I mean, a lot of these guys are carrying 300 pounds. Yeah. I mean, I, A, you don't want to be pushed around, I guess, and, and then at the same time, you got to have a little bit of quickness if you're going to be playing nose guard or if you're going to be playing what we used to call the two-tack. That one knocked down your man, yeah. My man. Daniel Crosley. Yeah, Crosley got those big mitts up there and got them up high, knocked down the football. Daniel Crosley. Again, second team All-Southland Conference. Last year had nine sacks, fourth in the conference. And that's his first knockdown of the season. It's going to bring up a third and long. Call it 14. Again, the Cardinals showing a lot of different fronts on defense. This one in the air over the head of the intended receiver and out of bounds. No way Jarius Clayton was going to get it. He's been the only receiver for the Delta Devils that's really had any success. Three catches for 31 yards. That'll bring up a punting situation. Give credit to Lamar's defense. First three and out here in the second half. Can they maintain that effort throughout the second half? Only time will tell, but... Off to a fast start, and good job there by slowing down Mississippi Valley State offense. Justin Reed will punt. An Australian <laughs> averaged 36 
yards last week in his punch. It's going to be fielded by Lawson at the 50, at the 40. Got a lane, but he's met and brought down at the 33-yard line. But still, good return on that one, setting the Cardinals up in great field position. And he's been the spark plug for the Lamar Cardinals all night. That's Michael Lawson doing it defensively, but also doing it on the special teams. You remember in the first half, he returned one back. It was called and negated due to a penalties. But Michael Lawson has now picked up where he left off, returning that back and giving the offense excellent field position. Hoy again in the backfield. Miles Wanza will get the carry. Breaks it for eight off the left side. Good running play there by Miles Wanza. Give credit to the left tackle. Being able to open up that running lane for Wanza. Be able to square his shoulders up and get vertical. Lamar needs Miles Wanza to be able to bring that energy, especially that speed here in the second half. Aiden Cagliolejo on the left side. Going across the middle, finding nice. his intended receiver. Nice snag across the middle by Case Robinson, the big senior out of Crockett. And you can see in this replay here, they go with a speed option. But watch this. They fake it. By faking it, DeWanza opens up the middle for Case Robinson to come across in the slant route to pick up the reception and get in the red zone. Robinson had a touchdown last week. Wanza just got caught up in the backfield. Nothing going that time. If you're Lamar right now, only thing you can be thinking about is a touchdown. You cannot settle for a field goal. If you're, if you're Jordan Hoy as the starting quarterback, you're telling your guys, we've got to execute with a touchdown. Be second and 11. Can get a first without getting the touchdown. Boy, he kind of he gives it to Wanza, but then he fakes it just in hopes that maybe it attracts somebody in his direction. So now it will be third and eight. Wide outs, double left, double right. Looking across the middle, throws it short, finds his intended receiver, but he's going to be pushed back. Instead of picking up the first down, think he's going to be well short of the first down. Lamar tried to go with a quick slant, trying to catch Mississippi Valley State defense off guard. Did not pick up the touchdown. Looks like they're going to settle for a field goal. Eric Bizarro, the freshman. So, at you, as you said, you, you're thinking touchdown, but you'll take the three if you can get it. Not what you wanted, obviously. This one is up, and it is good by Bailey Giffen. So that will give Lamar a three-point edge with 11.56 to go here in the third quarter. So the home team goes, uh, what, six plays, 29 yards, but have to settle for a 22-yard field goal. Still gives them a three-point advantage as we head here into the meat of the third quarter. Deep kick, not going to be brought out, I wouldn't think, out of the end zone. No, touchback. And Mississippi Valley State will have to see if they can get something going on offense. Yeah, because their first their first drive stalled out. They couldn't get anything running the football. They tried to pass when it was on third and eight. It didn't work for them. They had to force that punt. Well, it was forced to punt, which set up Michael Lawson to be able to get great field position for Lamar. And, you know, a lot of it has to come from halftime adjustments. I mean, both on offense and defense. Defense knows. They've seen. Now you've got time to sit and talk. Yeah. Chalk it up. And then, you know. X's well, and O's, right? Well, also, Mississippi Valley struggled in the first quarter, in their first couple of series, and eventually they figured it out. Let's see how it takes place now. As you can see, Brian busting it wide open down the sideline for the Delta Devils. Boy, that was really a touchdown-saving tackle, too, from behind. Otherwise, it is all over. I mean, he uh, if Abel Daly had not caught up with him, 
He'd have been off to the races. You can see here in this replay, watch Bryant sells the fake, but he keeps the football cut back against the grain. Missed tackle there by Lawson, which helped Bryant pick up more yards. Not going to be quite as successful this time, but he will not keep it himself. And it's going to be John Derrick Smith coming up. But maybe two yards will give him that. The senior out of Greenwood, Mississippi. So it'll be second and seven. Another nice gainer that time on the right side by John Derrick Smith. Talk to me a little bit about this idea. You sell it, you sell the keeper, give to the back. That opens things up too, right? Oh yeah. Anyway, it's, it's all about timing in that RPO style offense, the run pass option. So the quarterback dictates if he's going to keep it or not. But it's all about uh, timing as well as a feel. The running back has to feel that the quarterback is going to give it to him. And once he does that, it just changes the direction of how the defense is going to attack you. Going to have a flag on the play from the uh, body language. I'm guessing it's against Lamar. All that said and done, the end result is it's still first down. But your coach Schultz right now, you kind of you kind of be a little disappointed just when you thought you had some momentum building with that field goal. You know, right now your defense is, seems like they're giving up big holes. Yeah, really big holes in the running game. Going to go up top. Overcooked it. And the intended receiver really didn't have any chance at all. That was Johnny Wilson. First shot, I, I can remember that Mississippi Valley actually threw the ball down the football. They've just been relying too much on the running game. Try to see if they can catch Lamar sleeping in that man-to-man -man coverage. Bryant now 5 of 11. This time they'll keep it on the ground again. It looks like... For all intent and purposes, John Derrick Smith picked up the first down. He had that extra lean at the last second. Could have got him one or two more yards, maybe the first down. But it didn't. They're still going to call it short. He'll get the carry again, and this time he will pick it up. Mississippi Valley State comes right back with the same play. They didn't even change the play. Come back with the same play to the same running back. Lamar got to do a better job shoring up the tackles and stopping the running back at the line of scrimmage. Mississippi Valley State is now pushing for the red zone. Mentioned earlier, it's just become common practice now at college and high school that you don't go to the huddle, you just stand and look to the sideline at the line of scrimmage. It's not necessary about a hurry up thing. There you go. Dallas getting in there. Dallas Martin, the linebacker. Obviously. Not appreciated by DeJerick Bryant, but Bryant needs to be careful. He lost his helmet, so he'll have to come off the field now for at least one play. As you can see, things are starting to get chippy out there with Bryant going back and forth with, with the defensive players of Lamar. Design quarterback keeper, he runs in a brick wall, runs into a brick wall with number 94 there, Cameron Houston, as well as Martin. His helmet comes off, and he's very frustrated about that. I don't know if it was actually the tackle or after the tackle, and everybody's <laughs> getting up that he was frustrated. Nonetheless, it's going to bring up a second and 10. Again, we'll have to have a change of quarterback there as Roger Totten checked in, the junior. But I would suspect, as well as DeJerick Bryant has been playing, he won't stay out long. And you know with the new rule now, once a player loses his helmet, he has to go out of the game for at least one play. And yep. that's exactly why Bryant went out. His helmet came off. You can definitely tell he was frustrated, but now he's back in the game. Third and a long nine in the red zone. Lamar, most men on the line of scrimmage we've probably seen all night expecting the run, and that's exactly what it was. I think they may have thought that it was 
given off to Derek Smith when, in fact, it was Bryant with another keeper. I can tell you one thing. Dallas Martin is really putting in a lot of effort tonight for the Lamar Cardinals defense. You see him in that shot. The outside linebacker stayed home, did not get sold on the fake by the pitch there by Bryant, bring him, bring him down for the fourth down. See Darian Wilson checking back in, and again, field goal attempt coming up. And there's going to be a flag, so that'll stop things before it ever gets started. Looks like maybe a going to be against the offense. It'll back them up. The question becomes, does that move them out of range for Hayden Schuster? Number 47 will still have a go at it. Going to mark it down at the uh, 26, so a 36-yard field goal attempt by Schuster. See if he can tie this thing up. Nope. Kick is wide to the right. Never had a chance. Huge break there for Lamar Cardinals. Defense. So Lamar will hang on to that three-point advantage with 8.06 to play in the third. Lamar coming back, their second offensive possession here of the half. Oh, no. Deep in their own territory. We have an, an issue to work out with the officials here. Now the ball is set. Jordan Hoy still the uh, starting quarterback for Lamar. Going to give to Wanza, who bounces it nice. out. Nice gainer, still going. Picks up 12 on sheer effort that time. Good hard run there by Miles Wanza, the junior out of Houston, Texas. You see in this replay, it's a simple handoff. You want to give the ball to Wanza early and often. Look at the power, but look at the ability to bounce to the outside. Pick up 12 yards and the first down for the Cardinals offense. Kind of ducks it in there and then heads out. Wanza again, bouncing it outside. And right now, Lamar wants to take advantage of whatever they're seeing on that left-hand side as far as running the football. Go with the misdirection play there with the two guard, with the guard and the tackle pulling to the right. But Jordan Hoy pushes the ball quickly to Wanza for some more positive yards. Well, you got Case and you got Humberto uh, Lopez on the left side there. Some... Pretty good guy, 64 is Humberto Lopez. Oh, Another okay. drop. Is it going to be an incompletion or a fumble? And it's Banks who drops it. But, again, coming back the other direction, Mississippi Valley State. Nice pickoff that time, or at least pick up, I should say, on the fumble by Savette and Gray. Another fumble there by Kirkland Banks. That's his second fumble tonight for the Cardinals. You gotta be frustrated right now if you're the head coach as well as the coaching staff. You see this replay. A quick pass to Kirkland Paint. Go with the play action pass. Comes back to the back side. Takes a couple of steps, but he coughs up the football. Second fumble here tonight for Kirkland Banks. Really killing the momentum for the offense. So the play is under review. I guess the idea being did he have enough time to have true possession of the ball? So they'll take a look at it. Uh, re replay official is Jim Campbell, so I'm sure he's looking at it now. The uh, referee will also get a lot, but Al Jones, and see what they have to say upstairs. And, Dan, if you're Kirkland right now, you want to tell him <laughs> yeah. he would like to him for them to say that that was not a catch. Well, there's the – looked like he had a couple of steps. Now, the hard part is we're not seeing it from the other side, so it's hard to tell if he had complete control of the ball while he took those steps. And whether or not, you know, he gave it up. And I think I gave credit to the wrong person there. It was actually Keontae Daniels, the defensive back, who picked it up there. The junior out of 
Here's another angle that we have. You see how Check many steps? Let's see. One. One and a half, no, two. That's a fumble, Dan. I think the question, though, to me was control of the ball in his hands. When he made the catch and he turned, did he was he still juggling the ball or did he have possession of the ball? Well, unless we'll I'm know see, pretty quickly here. Yeah, unless I'm seeing something totally different. It seems like he had control of the football. He took two full steps, which in my book, I'm not an official, but in my book, that's a fumble. Well, they're obviously looking at it from a couple of different angles here to see what they see. Here's another shot right now in the replay. Watch his hands to see if he controls the football. Here's the play action pass. Hoy comes back to the backside. Release the football. As Kirkland Bates catches one, he drops two, three. That's a fumble, Dan. But then again, I could be wrong, but my first initial <laughs> is a fumble. I well, we'll know right now. Yeah, there's no, no need. Well, let's end the suspense. So after review, it was a fumble. They agreed with you, and we move on. As Mississippi Valley State comes up with a big turnover. Huge and turnover. And great field position. Absolutely. They're going to get some really good field position with that charging running attack. The Delta Devils, now they want to build off this momentum. Interesting thing, too, because Mike Schultz talking earlier in the season, uh, in the season uh, before even before the last week's game about the fact that if there was a position that he felt soft in on offense, it was receivers, mm -hmm. that he did not feel like he had the battle tested. But Kirkland Banks is one of those battle tested receivers, but yet he's the, the person that's uh, turned it over twice tonight. Oh, late that's hit. That's going to be a late hit yeah. on uh, Dallas Martin as he was out of bounds. Bang seems like it's starting to unfold for Lamar defensively. Uh, you know, with that penalty and that late hit, it just seems like he's killing the momentum, everything else. Just a simple handoff to the motion man. He comes to the backside. Bryant gives it to him. As you can see, good block there in front. But watch, he's out, clearly out of bounds. And Dallas Martin comes in and cleans him up late. So it'll be a personal foul that'll make it a first and 10 plus 15 yards. It'll set him up at the 15 yard line. And the penalties continue to pile up for both teams. As we at this point have had 11 penalties on the night. No big surprise here that the Jarek Bryant keeps it on the right side. Good for three. Team to watch the clock, Dan. Watch how Mississippi Valley State take their time in the red zone. They want to continue to control the clock. We talked about time possession at halftime, but Mississippi Valley doing a really good job here on the road. Lamar shows blitz, then backs off. Going to go to the weak side. Looks to throw it incomplete. As Clayton Ger uh, Gervais slipped down. And then surprisingly, I'm surprised that the Mississippi Valley State is not running the football. I mean, do not get away from the running game. Seems like to me now in the red zone with short real estate, they will take advantage of the running attack and not rely too much on passing the football. John Derrick Smith in the backfield with Bryant. Smith, 10 carries for 39 yards, but Bryant's been the workhorse. 17 carries, 113 yards. Pass again. That's an interference. Uh, it's got to be yeah. an interference call. And uh, that call is going to go against Stanley Norman. And he looks surprised as if he did. <laughs> He didn't make contact before the football came. You can see this replay here. Watch Hoy at the top of the of the screen, number one. He is definitely passing the finish. He cannot engage with the receiver prior to him being able to make a play on the football. Number one. And the sad part is, I don't think there was any chance he was going to make the catch anyway. The pass is overthrown. 
I mean, I get it. He wants to be aggressive. Sure. He wants to make a play. Fronting you know, up the guy. Absolutely, and the man-to-man coverage. But he, you can't make contact with him prior to the ball getting there. Brian trying to find a spot to get in. No place to go. Good play that time There's coming another up. flag against Lamar. Can't hurt him too much. I guess half the distance yeah. to the goal is only going to be a yard. I want to say it's against Lamar. Let's see. Here's the call. Sportsmanlike conduct. Yep. Number half the distance to the goal. I think, like you say, I think frustration is really starting to show itself now on Lamar's defense. Yeah, because it seems like every time they figure – they got, you know, they got Mississippi Valley on the ropes. Here comes the Delta Devils with their offense. Nice stop that time. Good play by Lamar that time. Tell you what, to Jared Bryant might want to get some better snaps on that <laughs> helmet. Uh, to his defense, on that last play, they snatched this helmet off his head. You could definitely tell he was going the way down. And the player grabs his helmet, which is it takes advantage for them. As you can see here in this replay, watch Bryant sells the fake, keeps it as he's going down. Guy just rips his helmet off. The well, but uh, my point being that should your helmet come off that easy? <laughs> I guess it's that or uh, Totten uh, comes in and nice he didn't job. have a chance. He's looked a little lost that time. Guess who? Michael Lawson. One of the best defensive backs. He's been backs, the big yeah. play, big play man of the night for Absolutely. the defense. Coming down and shoring up that tackle, <laughs> quarterback was <undecided>, indecisive yeah. of what he wanted to do, but Lawson made a decision for him, taking him down to the ground. And Taunton, to his credit, I mean, he has not taken that many snaps. So, yeah, but back into the game will come to Jarek Bryant, and it's still a third down, but they have lost three yards over the course of the last two plays. Comes everybody. That should be a touchdown. And it is a touchdown into the end zone, in the corner. Beautiful throw. Put it right where it had to go to Johnny Wilson. And the Tyler Town Mississippi native hauls it in. And Mississippi Valley State jumps back in front. And then when in doubt, you want to go deep to your receiver, especially if he's 6'5". Look at Wilson at the top in the man-to-man -man coverage, the top of your screen. With no safety help over the top, what you do, Bryant goes high to his 6 fire receiver in Wilson for the sure touchdown. Just throw it over the shoulder and let him catch it. It was a beautiful catch and a nice throw as well. So, again, a chance for Mississippi Valley State to one-up the Cardinals and make it a four-point difference. Wow. But it's blocked. And that really is one of those situations where it could come back to haunt you later because now it's a field goal instead of a touchdown difference that you were going to have to do. So the Cardinals kind of catch a break there. Yeah, great point there, Dan. All right, once again, check out the block on this point after. Lamar with 440 left to play in the quarter. Down by three at home. So seven plays, 36 yards. And again, Mississippi Valley State takes advantage and goes up by three. Taken at the 10, out to the 20, 25, 30, out to the 35. And Miles Wanza doing a little bit of everything. Returning kickoffs and, of course, also this evening has totaled 71 yards in the backfield on 15 carries. And if you're Lamar right now offensively, you do not have to hit the panic button. I mean, I mean you still have enough time in the third quarter. You have momentum. You got Miles Wands is starting to get his, his legs going here and feeling himself running the football. Just get back to that, and you'll find a way to move the ball down the field. 
Find the holes like that one and let him do what he does best, which is stay on his feet. Because what we're starting to see now, Dan, is that the offensive line of Lamar is starting to wear down that defensive front for Mississippi Valley, which is opening up some huge running lanes for Miles Wanza. Jordan Hoy again, 12 of 19. This time they give it to a man who had a really good week last week, and Darian Randall had 79 yards on five carries. In fact, you might remember he had a long of 46 last week against Bethel. That time he does enough to pick up the first down. Still fights his way down for another couple of yards. And what we're seeing out of Randall, he's a different style runner out of, compared to Miles Wanza. Randall is more of a bigger bruiser type of runner. He likes to run north and south, and he can take those type of hits. Wanza is more of a speedy, shorty, shorter running back that has the elusiveness to get away from defenders and take it north and south. Boy, fakes, goes deep. Can there he find is. his receiver? Ow, oh. in and out of the hands of Carmoni Green, the junior out of Miami. But right there with him, step for step, also is Isaiah Latham. Yeah, Latham with the closing speed, number 24. Got his head around, but also had the speed to be able to get back and help defense knock that ball away from Green. Second and 10. Showing the blitz. Showing how everybody's coming. Oh, fumble. Wanza gives it away. Can't get a hold of it. And it's going to be recovered by Mississippi Valley State. And they'll go back to work after Jerry Garner comes up with it. And the sad part about that, Dan, they knew that Mississippi Valley State defense was coming. They showed their hand. And they still didn't check out of the play. They went with the option, but it can't, can't, It looks like it's going back to Lamar. Looks like we may have a penalty flag down on the field. And it is going to be against the defense, and it is going to be Lamar's ball. Talk about catching another big break. And you can imagine if you're the coach for – Mississippi Valley State, whether you're the defensive coordinator, Derek Welch, or if you're the head coach, Vince and Dancy, you want an explanation <laughs> of what just happened. Check out this replay here. Delayed pitch to Wanza, which ended up bouncing off the front of his helmet and recovered by Mississippi Valley State. The head coach, as well as the defensive coordinator, you can see right there engaging with the officials, wanting to know why is that not the fumble. <laughs> As you can see, yeah, a lot of discussion going on there. Explain this one to me. So there's going to be a timeout called on the field, I think, or at least it. I'm still trying to figure that one out myself. Well, if you're Lamar, you can't allow yourself to get too many. I mean, I mean, you don't think you get too so involved. many. Not in just involved, but I mean, you, you caught a break, but how many breaks are you going to get in, well, this, yeah. in this game? You got to execute, and that's the key word right now for Lamar offense. Got to execute your plays. So I think they actually, what if I'm understanding this right, they called that an incomplete pass to Wanza. Not a lateral, but an incomplete pass. Well, so that would be the reason that Lamar retained possession. But you got to do something when you catch the break, and they just didn't. Give credit to Mississippi Valley State defense line putting pressure on Jordan Hoy, forcing him to step out of the pocket, but also he rushed that pass, couldn't find his receiver. So Lamar be forced to punt again. Oh. Valley players running to each other. They did, but still – Managed to walk away in a pretty good situation considering Lamar looked like they were going to be on the move, that possession. Ball's on the 
3-10 left to play in the third quarter. Statistically, I mean, you look at it, and Mississippi Valley State has really had time of possession, number of first downs, certainly yards rushing, the advantage over, but still it's just a three-point game. And the sad part about that is that Lamar's allowing, well, allow Mississippi Valley State to stay in this game and also get the lead back. So you got to think about it. now that Mississippi Valley is up by three points, they're not in the rush to be able to do it. If, they can, if the clock ends right now, they'll be a winner of this game. So they're trying to find a way to win their first victory. And looking at their record from last year, looking at their loss last week, they're chopping at a bit for their first victory in a long time. We mentioned they last year won and 10. And then this year, starting off with that 20-26 loss to Tennessee State. They're going to play conservative football. They're not going to force anything. They're going to try to get a first down. If they can bust it out and get some yardage, they will do it. If not, they will punt it and rely on their defense. That's their game plan right now. I mean, because Lamar hasn't shown anything threatened as far as offense to be able to tell Mississippi Valley to have a sense of urgency. Bryant short on his pass. It's going to be incomplete. Trying to force it in that time. And just didn't get it out quite far enough to reach the intended receiver. Set of in gray. So a real quick hurry up offense. Oh, wait, nope, let's look to the sideline. Oh, <laughs> wait, let's call a timeout. Okay, I think a, a microphone issue is underway for the officials. I don't know if we're going to get a battery change or what, but got a timeout called on the field. Here comes a replay. I think they're going to actually look at this one. So challenge this play here. See if there's uh, a catch. Hard oh, to see because yeah. definitely hard to see. Stephen Jones, the D-back, was right there in front of him. But boy, that that have to be. I don't know. Not to come off the ground. I think we have maybe one more angle. We'll take another look at it. See what you think. Yeah, it just happened so quick it's hard to tell that it's in his hands. So the question is, of course, Stephen Jones is going to sell it as a bounce, but... Yeah, that was a tough one right there. Maybe they're going to stick, I mean, be consistent and just stick with the call on the field. I think we have one more angle for you to look at. I'm not sure you're going to, this is going to be from the backside. I'm not sure it's going to clear things up for you. Well, his elbows are definitely on the ground. His hands are on the ground. But it doesn't matter. It's whether or not the ball was on the ground. I truly believe they're going to stay consistent to call on the field. They don't have enough to overturn it. They just let it go. Long time looking at this one. But I think it may be, like you said, kind of inconclusive. They've had the angles that we've had to look at it. Some of the young fans out on this Saturday night in Beaumont. Better get their football fixed tonight because it's going to be a while, a couple of weeks before Lamar gets back home to play again. Here's the call. So after the review, you're right. You're going to stand with the call, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Yeah, it was just so hard. I mean, you really couldn't tell if he caught it or not. It'd be so hard to overturn something that's 
go with the original call in a situation like that so they can move on with the game. Fourth and one with a minute 40 to play in the quarter. I don't think you have to worry too much about trickery or fake punt this deep in your own territory with a three-point advantage. Should give Lamar good field possession. Long count, yeah. using up the clock to two. Barely get it off, but they do, and a nice high kick. Got to get away player. from Boy, it. Yeah. Lawson standing right there next to it as it takes a dangerous bounce, but a good bounce for the Delta Devils. Going to put Lamar back deep in their own territory. So nice punt that time after the Mississippi Valley drive stalls out. 57-yard punt with the roll. Yeah, and if you're Lamar right now, you can try to build some momentum and confidence going in late in this third quarter can help you in the fourth quarter with this offensive play. Hoy on the keeper dives out to about the 28-yard line. And Lamar's doing a lot of misdirection. They want to fake one way but opposite and take the ball opposite and by running it with the quarterback. And as we saw in that last play there, Dan, they want to freeze the linebackers as well as send the defense line in one direction. But Hoy is smart enough to keep it and pick up some positive yards. Second and short. Going to give it to Randall, but big play that time by Mississippi Valley State coming up and making the stop before he could pick up any yards is Balmy Swanier out of past Christian Mississippi. Junior transferred from East Central, and Mississippi Valley State's got a bunch of transfers on this team. Can they get the playoff before the end of the third quarter? I don't think so. Nope, and I don't think they were too worried about that. So they'll turn things around and – Go at it for another 15 minutes. Stay with us. We'll see. Can Lamar come back, or does the Delta Devils have control of this one? <laughs> 15 minutes left to decide this one here in Provost Humphrey Stadium. Some Lamar fans may wake up tomorrow and look and say, well, wasn't this the team that had 658 total yards <laughs> in the first week of the season? And, yeah, they did. They're a long way from that tonight, though. Yeah, offensively, they've just been so inconsistently, uh, inconsistent against a, a not really a tough defense, but it's just been – it seems like Lamar, as soon as they figure out what they want to do, they switch the game plan and their formation, and that second option doesn't work for them. They got to get back to what they know best is keep the ball in, uh, in, in, in Hoy's hand and throw it down the field. There's one thrown ah. down the field, but his intended receiver, Kenny Allen, trips up before he gets there. And then here's the thing. We haven't seen a lot of big plays from Lamar tonight. We've seen that last week. Big play after big play, which led to 65 points. We have not seen any home run plays, any really uh, big runs from Lamar. A couple of plays here and there with Kirkland Banks in the first half, which led to the touchdown. But right now they just seem so flat, and they have lack of big plays against a very small defense in Mississippi Valley. And I think it's going to make a lot of people wonder, you know, that, that age-old question, is it that the offense isn't that good or that the defense is that much better than it was the week before? And I think the answer is actually maybe a little bit of both. Yes, a little bit of both. And, that, and again, I think – Last week, they, you know, a lot of people start drinking the Kool-Aid of, oh, they're a really good offense, but they right. really played a smaller school. This week, they're playing a Division One school, and Mississippi Valley State came and playing with the house's money. They had nothing to lose. They're looking to build their confidence up and build a way to get, some, get another win, and Lamar seems like, oh, we're just going to play down to the competition and try to fight our way through it and find our way through it, but they realize now they're in a dogfight at home. 
Hoy on the keeper when he couldn't find an open receiver. And he manages to pick up a few, but it's still going to be short of the first down, and it looks like Lamar is going to go for it. Trying to call him offsides. There's the snap. Give to Wanza. He's going to get the needed yards for the first down. Good job there selling the fake. But also, you can see Jordan Hoy looks to the sideline as normally the defensive players let up. Then they snap the football, give it to Miles Wanza, who leaps over the defender to be able to pick up the first down. They really need to sustain a drive here, don't mm -hmm. they? Absolutely. Eat up some clock. Looks like he's going. Hits it across the middle. Another catch by Case Robinson, the big tight end. 6'1", 250. Actually, that's Mason Sykes. I thought it was Robinson, but Sykes, an even bigger target. The junior out of Lumberton, 6'4". You can definitely tell this play action pass, which allows the receiver to get across the field. The tight end of sneak behind the linebackers has been working for Lamar thus far this game. Nice completion. This time Hoy is going to scramble to the outside, maybe get two. Lamar's relying heavily on the play action pass. They want to sell the fake, either his zone replay or also a fake option pitch out to be able to freeze the linebackers. We saw Sykes get behind the linebacker and get that reception. If I'm Coach Schultz, I'd probably go back to something similar like that because that's working for him from a passing game standpoint. Hoy is 15 of 25 on the night. Going to keep it on the ground. Oh, oh tough hit for Wanza. Man, he went down hard. Had his legs cut out from under him when he was trying to make that cut. Good play by Jonathan Jones for Mississippi Valley State. Yeah, good saving tackle there for Jones. I'm pretty sure if Wanza would have kept his balance. He I think so, that, too. He would have took that to distance. It's going to bring up third and six. And motion goes Wanza to the right. Hoy in the pocket. He's Back. in trouble. Throws it, and it's intercepted. Wanza in desperate, I mean, uh, Hoy in desperation going down, throws the ball, and it goes right into the hands of Rod Silvestri for the interception. Huge break there for Mississippi Valley State defense, as you see in this replay. Watch Hoy gets the pressure up the front. He steps up in the pocket. You think he was going down for a sack, but no, he throws the football. Bad decision there by Hoy which leads to another turnover by Lamar's offense. And there's no way he could have known where the ball was going because he was actually going going down. So actually he just threw it up for grabs. Yeah. I mean, he couldn't see where, I don't think, where he was throwing the ball. But, again, Ron Savelstri was standing right there, the senior with the interception, and puts the Death of Devils back on offense. And uh, it's going to be, a, it looks like, movement on the line that time. And that's the reason why. And then that's the reason why Mississippi Valley State is, you know, winning this game over huge turnovers like that. I mean, you can't – you'd rather just take the sack instead of giving the ball over and the turnover like that. You, you can't make those type of plays. Trying to force the issue. There's a missed tackle. And picking up a decent gain that time. It's going to be Johnny Wilson. Wilson looking, to trying see. to look and see who made who missed that tackle. A lot of missed tackles tonight as well. So you add that to the to well, the list. you know, in, in when the season first began, Lamar head coach Mike Schultz said, you know, one of his he felt like one of the big deficiencies on defense was the secondary. Mm -hmm. Keeper. Then he gives it to Derek uh, Johns, Derek Smith. And Smith may be a yard, if that. And if you're Mississippi Valley State offensively, 
you have to lead with three points here, le less than 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, there's no rush. Right. Well, they're just playing for the first down. They're not really playing to try to get down the field. They just want to kill that clock and continue to sustain their drives by picking up first down. If they don't, they feel like they want to punt it, they can do that because – yeah, again, I stated they came in playing with the house's money, and you can definitely tell right now there's no sense of urgency for them to take a shot down the field offensively. Try to run it off the right side, but met almost immediately at the line of scrimmage that time. Daniel Crosley is there. And again, so is Dallas Martin. And that'll force them in a punting situation. So a good stand by the Lamar defense. Well, you had no other choice, Dan. No. Think about it. After it, that turnover, yeah, you I had agree. to come out and play. Lawson back deep to receive the punt. Now, this will be huge if Lawson is get some really good field position or maybe the opportunity to return it for a touchdown. He's been threatened all night as far as that punt return. He's been doing a really good job returning those punts. I believe we're going to have a timeout called, and we do. Mississippi Valley State did not get their punt team on in time. So with the indecision, Amari will have a chance to talk about it. So the Cardinals will get another possession with 10.03 to play in the game, trailing by three at home. Some of the young fans in the stands here at Provost Humphrey Stadium, Beaumont, Texas. Out for a little fun on a Saturday <laughs> night. Maybe it's the game. Maybe it's just the game they're playing. Yeah. But they're having a good time. As we mentioned, we've had some technical issues with the officials' microphone, so they're making some changes. I understand that. <laughs> hey, can we change the batteries in that thing? Let's see if it works better. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll know soon enough. The way things are going, it won't take long. We've already had 15 penalties in this game, and we still got 10 minutes to play. So, again, Mississippi Valley State to kick it away. Aiden Schuster. Also, Justin Reed, the kickers. That's Reed with the punt. So, Lamar will go to work at the 36, their own 36-yard line. So far tonight, they've managed 16 first downs. And far short of that total offense that they were producing last week, which, again, earned them uh, – Spot in the top 25, number 23 in the College Sports Madness poll this week. But if they can't produce more than this, I'm not sure that will last very long. No, not at all. They need to find a way to get back into this game. I talked about last quarter there was no sense of urgency for Lamar because they had enough time. Well, I changed my mind. This quarter, <laughs> they're, they're the clock fresh. is running. Huh? The clock is continuing to run. The fans need to get back into this game. And Lamar needs to find a way to get some points. Wanza in motion. Hoy looks across, finds his intended receiver. First catch, if I'm correct, to Carmoni Green, who had four last week. And that is indeed Green's first catch of the night. Quick out pass to Green. He's been the deep home, home run threat throughout the game. You can see in his replay, but Hoy switches it up and go to Green. Real quick to the outside. They don't make a play. Try to spin off the defender. Oh, fumble. Yep. Hoy is going to fumble that one. You missed it on the replay, but he was rolling out to his left, his, his left, and the ball just came out. Let's see if maybe we have a replay of that. As you can imagine, Mississippi Valley State couldn't ask for a bigger huh. gift. Talking about a, a huge break and turnover right here. Oh, man, you got to secure the football. You know, Jordan Horry is carrying the ball like a loaf of bread and allowed the defender to come from behind to strip, to 
to strip the ball out of his arms, which allowed the fumble. Mississippi Valley State gets another early Christmas gift. And great field position on top of that. Bright going upstairs. That's the flag. Going to be incomplete. Don't see any thrown at this point. Well, I might have caught a break, but they do have a player down. Limping off the field is Cameron Hayes. So that'll bring a second and 10. Trips to the left. But he's going to go the opposite oh. direction. Hits his receiver before he has a chance to turn around. A little miscommunication that time. Yeah, it seems like the receiver was not ready on that yeah. Wilson. You can see as he tried to go down the field. Watch Bryant with the quick release to Wilson. Just catches well, I don't Wilson. Know. He had turned, but it looked like he didn't have his hand set. Oh, okay, I got you. Looked like to me he even realized the ball was coming. I, his it way. didn't look like it caught him by surprise, didn't it? Once again, they got three receivers to the top of the screen. Pick Here comes the blitz. Yeah. Gambling it all. Bryant goes downfield. Oh, he had a wide open receiver. And he just overthrew Jarius Clayton. As Michael Lawson had was behind by probably two steps. This opportunity there for Mississippi Valley State offense after that huge turnover by Lamar. Valley State is kicking the ball right back. Three and out. Yeah. Right back to Lamar. And it's the thing. If Lamar loses this game, they cannot say they didn't have chances. As soon as when you think they're down and out after a huge turnover, here comes Lawson back on the field for a punt return. It's just, it just seems like they're one play away from getting back into this game. Punt is up. Going to pooch it short. It's going to be taken by Lawson. It's going backwards. Can he get behind the screen? He gets a little bit of room. He's out to the 30, to go. the 40. Still going out to the 48-yard line. Don't see any flags down. And if that's the case, great return by Lawson. And his team is all over him. So the Cardinals go back to work, 8.32 to play, down by three. Out of it. Huge return for Lawson. He's been their spark plug throughout this whole game. And if Jordan Horry can't build off that momentum, something is wrong from the quarterback standpoint. You've got to find a way to get going here offensively. But you don't have to do it alone, and you don't have no. to be the, you know, Still got to play smart. Let's see if they can figure out a way to hold on to the ball as Hoy picks up three. Here comes the blitz. Picked up. Going to release it out to Wanza. Like that may be good enough for a first down. But eventually, Dan, Lamar will have to take a shot down the field. I mean, you can't go with the RPO style plays with the run pass option. Then you check down to Miles Wanza. I mean, you got to go up top to green. Like you said, wide receiver has been an issue coming into the season with no depth, no battle tested guys. But if you're Jordan, if you're Jordan Hoy, you got to take a shot down the field. Hoy, knowing he needs two yards to pick up his first down, keeps it off the left side, and he's successful, so it'll be a first down. Looking to the sideline for his plays, as we mentioned, Lamar runs co-offensive coordinators. Finds his man, gets it outside, nice run. Out of bounds goes Darian Randall. Nice job there by Randall. Some fresh legs off the sideline. You can see here Jordan Hoy gets the snap, pitches real quick to Randall. Watch Randall gets the ball a little bit late behind him, but still makes something out of nothing. Boy, that was close. Yeah. That was close to going the wrong way. 
But instead, they get a first and 10 out of it at the 24-yard line. Randall again up the middle. Again, last week, Randall's 79 yards. He is a senior. He's shaking up on that yeah, play. Looks like he may hurt himself. You know, we haven't seen Cole Starnes tonight. He had a pretty good week last week as well. Of course, the Cardinals with a 65-point effort saw a lot more people play last week. Randall takes his helmet off. Here's another guy we have not seen a lot tonight that had a big impact last week was A.J. Walker. True don't enough. Know, don't I think Walker, if I remember right, right I think Walker um, may have a bit of an injury okay, okay. coming into the game. Um, I was going to say that unless he's injured, we haven't seen him at all yeah. throughout this game. Nope. All the rushing duties have been Wanza, Randall, and uh, Kirkland Banks. Good to see so Randall, Randall back off. up. Yeah, it is. Back up on his own power, walking off. So Hoy will look to the sideline. There's a look at the senior out of Rockwall. 6'1", 184, Southland Conference, newcomer of the year last year. Two-time conference player of the week. Going to go to Wanza. And I think Mississippi Valley State's pretty much got that figured out. Yeah, no doubt. You, you know, got they, five guys trailing down the line. <laughs> they sniffed that out, and they're putting everybody in the box. They're not, they're not doing anything special, but what they're doing is they're putting a hat on a hat, and the three guys that can make a play are running around tackling Wanza for a loss or a short game. So now it's going to bring up a third and long just outside the red zone. Inside the six-minute mark. Boy, some time. Looks across the middle. No call. So an incomplete pass trying to find Kirkland Banks. See, Mike Schultz is not happy. And he's livid right now. On the field, asking for an explanation. He thought Kirkland Banks was draped over and call he should he wants a pass interference call can be vocal but i still don't think he's going to get it let's check out the, look replay. At the replay yeah, yeah. let's kirkland mason inside slot there he comes to a, oh, oh, i see yeah. what he's saying yeah. he's saying before he made the cut he already had his arm around him because at the time of the ball mm -hmm. arrival i thought well no big deal you know yeah he's there field goal though is going to be up and it is going to be good have a tied ball game. So we're going to wind up having a, what, 20, 37 yard field goal from Giffen Bailey, or Bailey Giffen, I should say, from 39 is good, and it's all tied up with 539 left to play. <laughs> Knotted up at 13, and uh, in the break, Lamar head coach Mike Schultz never stopped. I mean, he <laughs> was on the officials telling them it was a blown call. They blew it. That was Those were the words we could read from his lips. You blew it. You can definitely see why he was upset. Kirkland Banks was draped on, and all the guy in the corner was all over his shoulder pulling from the backside. Coach Schultz wanted to defend his players and let their officials know that they blew a call on that last play. Jonathan Jones not called, though, and again, a 39-yard field goal by Bailey Griffin, and it's all even at 13, but this may come down to the last team having possession wins the ball game. And we mentioned a while ago, you know, that missed PAT could come back Mm -hmm. to be a difference, and here we are. It, you know, had you made that, it would not be a tie ball game, obviously, but it was missed. And if you're Valley right now and you just got to, I guess, get in field goal runs? I mean, do, uh, we, well, haven't I mean seen yeah. we haven't even seen their kicker. Uh, the yeah, we did. They did attempt a field goal, and they missed oh, it. Yes, Remember, why? Yeah, why? Right, right, yeah. 
It wasn't even in a no. ballpark. Bryant going back the other direction. He may be the one-man band this time. Mm -hmm. Lawson coming up and making a good tackle. I can tell you one thing. Lawson, he's going to be a really good player this year. He comes down. He has a really good nose for the football. He comes out and makes some real good solid tackles. But also the fact that he plays special teams. So he's a dual guy. He just doesn't play plays well at the safety position. He can also make impact, impact as far as returning the punts. Bryant looks down, finds Ooh. his intended receiver, and caught, and finally brought down at about the 28-yard line is Johnny Wilson, big gainer for the Delta Devils. Just when you th don't think that the Cardinals are going to give up a huge play down the field, well, Bryant finds his favorite 6'5 target here on the road, and that's Wilson for the reception. 37 yards and a first down, obviously. Clock continues to run. Bryant on the keeper. Really keeping him off balance on defense. And, you know, right now, Dan, Mississippi Valley State is going to take their time. They're, I promise you they're not going to. Not going to hurry the no, clock? No, they're going to. Try to milk that clock as much as possible, give the offensive line a chance to catch their breath, and go right back at that Lamar's defense. Man in motion, gets the ball and finds a hole oh. and cuts it up for a pretty good gainer that time. Coming to the flag. You cannot push players like that at the last second. He did not get called with the flag, but how did he escape three defenders on that last play? I don't know, but it just seems like. Lamar had an opportunity to bring him down behind the line of scrimmage. And he just snuck his way out of there to pick up some positive yards. Abel Daly finally brings him down, but not before he picks up a big gain. It's going to be third and three. Out of the shotgun. There goes Bryant again. Escapes one. Headed oh, for no. the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> the Jarek Bryant. Was a man on a mission that time. He knew what he wanted to do and even saw the road in front of him. And just like that, Mississippi Valley State takes the lead and with the opportunity to get their first victory in two seasons, well, right there, that play was unbelievable. Being able to get away from the pressure from the downside defensive end, Bryant was able to use his legs and escape that defense and get in the end zone for the, Valley, for the Delta Devils. Yeah, it was pretty obvious from the beginning it was never going to give the ball up. His intention was to get into the end zone. He found his lane and motored in. And there's the PAT is good. So it's a seven-point ball game, but there's still 318 left to play. Can the Cardinals come back and make an impact statement? A humid night and uh, along the uh, <laughs> Texas coast, but it doesn't seem to be slowing down the, those young fans having a good time. 318 left to play. And again, Lamar Cardinals find themselves down after that drive by Mississippi Valley State. Five plays, 75 yards to go back in front. I'm sorry, I didn't ever see what happened there. I was looking I think down. He a fair, I mean, fair catch. Fair catch. All right, now, Lamar, I mean, they had how many turnovers thus far in this game? Let me see. I mean, one thing you can't do is turn the ball over here at this series. Two, you have to play with a sense of urgency when I say that. If you catch the ball inbounds, you got to be able to get back to the line of scrimmage to be able to have some time to be able to reset your offense. Jordan Hoy. This series is really going to see how he's going to, to me, it's going to indicate or dictate to me how he's going to have for the remainder of the season. How can he lead this team? It's one thing to lead him down the field against Bethel University. It's another thing to lead a team down the field when you've been playing inconsistent all night from your home fans. Can he come back and win this game? 
Tries to release it out to Case Robinson out of his reach. Stops the clock at 311. Mississippi Valley State's played strong in the secondary today. They've covered up Lamar's receivers for the most part. Boy in trouble again oh, going no. down. Huge sack. Nice play that time. Coming up with the sack is Eric Powell. Senior 6-3 returning starter. And that really puts Lamar behind the eight ball now. Third and 14 deep in their own territory with time winding down. Try to get it all back at one time. Not going to do it. Still going to wind up being short. Although as they did get the catch that time as he releases it out to Eric Pizarro. And it's definitely four down territory if you're Lamar right yeah, now. Yeah, you don't have any choice, do you? Yeah, you, you cannot punt the football. So a quick out screen or a quick running back screen or wide receiver to get it out to the flats or uh, – you just take a chance with an option play. Two tight ends check into the ball game. I think they're going to have to talk about this one before they can run the play. And they do call a timeout. Definitely a do or die situation here. Well, I mean, if you're Mississippi Valley State, you're telling your guys play smart football, do not give up the big home run play. Keep your man in front of you. But if right. you're Lamar right now, you're saying, this is it, guys. In order for us to get to the end zone or get points on the board, we got to get the first down. Right. Some way, somehow. Yeah. And, again, it doesn't have to be a long throw down the field. But we've got to find some way to get the first down. And, again, Mississippi Valley, I mean, they're coming off the fact that they, you know, came within 20 yards of upsetting uh, Tennessee State last week. And this week, a chance to upset the number 23-ranked team in the country. But let's be honest, they haven't looked much like the number 23-ranked team in the country tonight. There's that first down and more going down the sidelines and get it out as Miles Wanza. Flag on a play. That might be, if that's against... Lamar, that could be the difference in the it looks like it is. look of the players. You would have to think it is as far as body language. Quick huddle. Here's the call. Personal foul. I'm pretty sure I could be. Pass interference. No, it's against Mississippi Valley State, and it's going to be a first down for Lamar. And I tell you, man, that rabbit foot is still working in the pocket of Mike Schultz because <laughs> Lamar has been getting some huge breaks here at home. home well, field they advantage. still got to convert on this, though. You've got 2-12 left to play. The ball at the 50-yard line, down by seven. Comes the rush. Hoy out of the pocket. Throws it out of play. Good pressure by the Delta Devils. I love this opportunity. This is when you want to see who steps up for your team, especially your seniors and your juniors. Who's going to step up and make that play? Who's going to be the hero? Hoy in trouble again, gotta goes feel, down. you got to feel the pressure if you're Hoy, though. Because you know, you know, Mississippi Valley State defensive line is pinning their ears back and coming right at Sure. They, they're not, you know, they're playing with the house's money, so they're coming right for you. So if you're Hoy, you can't just sit as a, a, a sitting duck in the pocket. you got to feel that pressure and get away from it. Extend the plays with your legs. This is when you yep. extend the plays with your legs. 
And if they're that covered up, you would think, okay, if I find a lane, there's a big play. Cuts across. Oh, no. Try to drop up <laughs> in the air and probably a mistake on his part to do that. That's Pizarro. Again, the true freshman. Which brings it, what, fourth down? Yep. I believe that will bring up a fourth down, right? Timeout by Lamar. So Got to take it. 115 left to play. This is the time where you bring out the old hook and ladder play. <laughs> old school football there, Dan. You better find something. <laughs> well, I mean, Lamar can't be mad at anyone but himself. I mean, they had multiple opportunities to win this game and, and get back into it, but – then you fumble the ball three times. Big turnovers. Then you have big inter- turnovers. Yeah. Then you have so many penalties to the point where, then on top of that, you do not control time of possession on your home field. So you let a visitor walk into your stadium and control the clock and the momentum. You just have yeah, a- because uh, Mississippi Valley, I mean, you're talking about five minutes, six minutes more time of possession yeah. in this game. Which means, in return, your defense is more on the field on the field more than your offense. Once again, a must make fourth and six. Swing it out to Wanza. He'll get the six. It'll be a first down, and he's out of bounds. Good hard run there by Wanza. Miles Wanza out of Houston, Texas. He's able to catch that swing pass, which is good because you yeah. get momentum. It's about time the defender gets you. You're already at two or three yards. Yep. Just release it. Keep working down the field. But you've got you've got 110 to put some points on the board here. Didn't get the playoff. I think a player running on the field for Mississippi Valley to call a timeout. And that's what we've got is a timeout called. And if you're Valley, you can't. I mean, literally, you cannot give up. No. You know, the home run play. Yeah, well, I'm I'm sure that's something. There's Vincent Dancy again in his debut as a head coach. Former defensive coordinator. So, I'm sure that's kind of what he's saying. You know, give up the short. You know, but let's don't let him get behind us. Yeah, that's a huge momentum killer right there. You give up the huge play with 110, 111 to go here in the fourth quarter. Makes a long ride back to Itabina, Mississippi. It would be. Snap, looking downfield. Ah. In and out of the hands of his intended receiver. And believe it or not, it's Kirkland Banks. Who's had one sour night? Yeah, that's a great word you use, sour, because he coughed up two fumbles, missed a lot of passes. He just had an off night tonight. Well, he can make up for it with a touchdown, Dan. Well, second and ten didn't take much off the clock. Two seconds. Boy, in the pocket ah. again. Kirkland Banks can't hang on to the ball. Another missed opportunity there by Kirkland Banks coming across the middle. If he'd had that reception, he had none but daylight and opportunity because. Well, nice nice move by Hoy, too, to look down the field to find him. It's just a release, right? He'd, well, that's what I was saying earlier. It's like extend the play with your legs, not right, stand like a right. standing duck in the, in the pocket and get sacked, which allowed Kirkland Banks to come across the field. Third and ten now. Boy, scrambling. Lots of room down the sideline. And he gets out of bounds. Stops the clock with 54 seconds left and another first down. Here we go. You know, can Lamar pull it out? Even though they played an ugly game far as offensively inconsistent and also defensively giving up huge run plays, can they pull it out and get a touchdown? It's now or never. Well, and you've still got time to do outs. You've still got time to, to get down the field. You know, here we have a series of plays. They've eaten up, what, 10 seconds, 12 seconds off the clock? 
And what help? Oh, what's helping right now is that extending the plays with your legs, finding the open man to be able to pick up the first down. He should have been doing that. When I say he, Jordan Hoy has the ability that he could have done that two series ago. Now, not harping on the past. You want to focus on the present, and right now he's really got back to the basics of using his legs to extend the play so guys can have a second chance. And not it. having to look downfield yeah. and, and being able to just hit the safety valve if you have to. Wanza on the carry. Mm. Look uh. at this. Look at this. There we go. Not stopping. He's down to the three-yard line, Time but the out. clock continues to run. So you either need to call a timeout. Or now it's a first down, so Wanza is down. hurt. Yeah. He took a shot there. Looks like he caught one in the chest or stomach as he was making a move in the middle. Probably knocked the wind out of him. If you're Coach Schultz right now, you're telling your guys, let's go. I mean, at this point, we got to go. Ain't no, no excuses. Right. This is what we worked all summer for right here. All right, so, so, so you – you convert this, and you get it into the end zone. Do you do you play for the win on an extra point, or do you just settle and let's play a tiebreaker? I say they settle and play for a tiebreaker. Because if you're Lamar with the, the style of play they've been putting out here tonight, I mean, you want to give your I I I, I go for the I go for the tiebreaker and try to play it in overtime compared to. Going for the win, and oh, well, uh, <laughs> uh, it's hard. I'm it's gonna hard. leave you with it, Coach. All right, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. So you got to get there first, though. That's yeah. you know, that's really immaterial at this point. If you don't score, it won't make any difference. All right, so you can see, Wanza has left the game, and. Honestly, I'm trying to figure out exactly what we're doing here. I say man to man at the bottom. Topping it up. Here's and see flag. if you can get it. There's the flag. Was it caught is the question. That's to me, is the bigger issue is whether or not. Yeah, they call it a touchdown. Johnson caught it, and they're going to call it a touchdown. So pass interference is beside the point. Take a look at this. I mean, it's just a classic, right? Yeah, man, man coverage at the bottom. Throw it up for you to see make a play. No. Oh, I where's the catch? The, you know, I don't think that's Where's the catch? the catch? That's off the field. If yeah. I want to review that, if I'm <laughs> oh, on yeah. the other side, you better bet I'm going to review that. We definitely saw that hit the ground. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Lamar's trying to line up as fast as they can <laughs> to kick the ball, but they're not going to get a chance to do that because you're going to review the play. And it's yeah, I think that you're going to see it overturned, quite honestly. Absolutely. They but it'll it. put Lamar in a position where, again, automatic first down with pass interference at the one-yard line. But I, I think here. you're – let's see. Yeah, at the bottom, they go man-to-man -man coverage. Jordan Hoy wants to give it – get the ball high in the air so his receiver can catch it the highest point. See great coverage there by the cornerback. Arms around him. That drew the flag from passing. Yeah, the there's the ball on the ground. Yeah, so that's obviously he didn't catch it. Marcellus Johnson, the freshman out of Colleen, sold it pretty good laying on the ground. But I don't think there will be any doubt. I don't think it's going to take long for him to come up with this. I think he was shocked that he got him. They call it a test. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> Maybe he thought they were playing a, a, a trick on him. Like, what? Oh, okay, all right, touchdown. Sure it is. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see number 39 is Cole Starnes. We mentioned he got a lot of time last week. So here's the call on the field. This is incomplete. Incomplete pass. But there was defensive pass interference. So, again, so it'll be first down, automatic first down at the one-yard line. And it's, you know, I don't know about you, but I heard this a thousand times when I played. It was, if you can't get it in from the one-yard line, <laughs> you can't get it in. You know what oh, yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. There's you, But, again, that's just good hard-nosed football now. Everybody lines up. 
and see what you can do with it. Touchdown. How about Jordan Hoy keeping it in for the touchdown? All right, now the decision comes. Do you try to make it a win on the extra point, or do you settle for a tie? Now, if it was Dan, I'm going Gresham, for it. He's going for it because he's been up since 3 o'clock this morning. I'm going for it. <laughs> You can see here the zone replay, design quarterback keeper. Jordan Hoy has a better chance of getting the end zone. He's a, one of the be better players in the red zone package. Good job there by Jordan Hoy keeping the football for the touchdown. And he sold it pretty good, too. Yeah. I think that was a lot of it. He left it in for Starnes a long time before he put it back out. All right, point after is good. So we've got a tie game, 20-20. But there's 31 seconds left to go. And... Stranger things have happened. <laughs> we know that's true. So Hoy on the night is uh, 20 of 38, passing for 221 yards. And he is also seven carry, 17 carries for 81 yards. Wanza closing in on 100 with 98. Meanwhile, Bryant for Mississippi Valley is 9 of 20 passing, but he is... 22 carries for 145 yards on the night. There's that good sell. And then touchdown for Lamar. Maybe well, asking themselves, where's this been all night? <laughs> well, you got to ask yourself, as far as special teams coach, you're telling your players, oh, yeah, make a play. Do not gotta give up. Got to cover this yeah, up. You got to cover. You cannot give up the kickoff return. Or kick it out of the end zone, which would be even better. Yep. Like that. Nice play by Bailey Giffen. And that will take it out of the hands of the return team and put it in the hands of the Delta Devils <laughs> offense. Again, stellar night for DeJarek Bryant. Had a good night last week against Tennessee State. Has come on strong, especially probably from, say, second quarter on. Mm -hmm. First quarter, he struggled a little bit. They're going to be content to run the time out on the clock, really? Well, they don't have the ability to throw the football down the field unless you're throwing the Wilson. So, you know, I, I'm pretty Well, I, I would have thought you'd run at least a couple of plays, but I guess, you know. <laughs> Again, I would have gone for two. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, at this point, it's like let's regroup if you're Mississippi Valley State yeah. and try to win this game in overtime. So that's what we'll do. They'll let the clock run out. That'll be the end of regulation. How and huge was that PAT that they missed? Oh, gosh. Yeah, you think about that. And if they wind up losing the game, that'll be one that you'll, you know, think about for a long time. Yeah. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We're in overtime. Lamar and Mississippi Valley. We are headed into OT, and we'll get another coin toss. Of course, if you're not familiar with overtime, you play a five-minute period. Consists of one possession for each team. And the order is decided by this coin toss that is going on right now. Each possession starts at the defense's 25-yard line. And then if you remain tied at the end of time, you just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> With another, I think, what is it, three overtime periods, I believe? Mm -hmm. And then you can be, it can, you can have a tie. So, again, the discussion going on about how it's going to be played. Coin is tossed. Okay, so they're going to go that way. Gentlemen, switch places. Uh, never mind. Just go to the sidelines. <laughs> they got it, though. You understand what's going on. I believe what he's telling us is Lamar will have first possession going that way.
And again, a little bit different than what you would expect. And if you're an NFL fan, does not work the same way. Everybody does get a touch. Everybody does get a possession, both teams. Well, I mean, how can you how can you approach it if you're Lamar? I will approach it the same way I did as I moved the ball down the field, and that's giving it to Jordan Hoy, number one, and you see in that shot. You know, he has – he dictates the tempo. He dictates the outcome. I mean, just continue to allow him to be able to use that RPO – a uh, run pass option. Yep. You know, then but you got to, I think, too, the mentality is we did it last time. We, you know, mm -hmm. we just have to go out and convert here. Wanza tries to get to the outside, maybe three or four yards. Got a flag on the play. Looks like it's going to be against Lamar. That's not the way you want to start in overtime. Still first down, but just increase that distance to the goal line. Now instead of from the 25, it's from the 35. Trips to the right, single back in the backfield. Quick pass, complete, and down to about the 22-yard line. And that's Pizarro with the catch. And that's, the, and that's really working for Lamar right now, is those quick slants, catching Mississippi Valley off, the, off guard in the man-to-man -man defense. Second down. The give to Wanza, straight ahead running, but he picks up maybe a yard. And that's going to bring up third and long. What are you looking for? Well, if I short if out? I, yeah, you gotta you gotta be able to get the ball. I'm looking at the slant here in the slot receiver. Or just throw it down the field. Oh, you can't bring the pressure. You can't let pressure get to you. Could well, you? now it's a fourth down situation. Yeah. You really don't. We'll see. I was going to say you don't have much option, but you do have an option. You can bring on the field goal team, kick the field goal, and at least you got three, and you got to hope your defense can stand up to the, to the test. Of course, so that'll be a, what, 44-yard kick? It's down, it's up, it looks good from here, and it is good from here. Bailey Giffen, 44 yards, had a 46-yarder last week. And now comes up with the 44 in overtime to put Lamar up by three. But again, now it switches around Mississippi Valley State at their 25 at the 25-yard uh, line to see if they can get in. And now if they don't, the game's over. Of course, if they score a touchdown, the game's over too. <laughs> well, if you're Lamar, the key is don't let him score. Don't let him score and, and force him to kick a field goal because you know their kicker is not that great. Well, the, I guess the question becomes containment, doesn't it? I mean, how do you stop uh, a guy who's all night long Really kind of had his number, and that's DeJarek Bryant, the quarterback. Well, I really believe now it plays in the favor for Lamar because they have half of the field. I mean, it's 25 yards, so they can put people – they can stock, stack the box and slip, oh, well, slow down the running game. Well, they do force him out of bounds for a loss of about two. Good play on the backside there by the secondary. A good look. And you want Andre Mullen. Another two more downs, three more downs to hold them. Got you three win. more. And you'll win the game. Uh, Going to go deep for it. Just don't get called is. for pass interference, and that one's overthrown. So, After playing an ugly game, you can find a way to win this game by shutting them down for two more plays. 
So if I'm a captain on that defense right now for Lamar, I'm telling everyone, let's go. We're two plays away from winning right. this game. Don't get sucked in, right? Because you know they're going to go to Wilson, so you want to have a safety over top to help number 11 for Lamar. And that's what Cameron Hayes. Mm -hmm. So you want to have someone over to protect him. And you double on Wilson. Look on the blitz. Get him. Got him. I right, got away from him. Can he get a shoestring tackle? No, he's still up. Finally goes down. Way back at the 43-yard line. Nice hustle that time by Andre Mullinax, among others. Not sure who got there first, but big play. Excellent job there for the defensive front for the Lamar Cardinals, as you can see here in this replay. And Brian comes up limping. But look at the pressure coming from the top side in Houston. Look at guys just flying around, laying out their bodies. That's what you want to see from your leaders. That's what you want to see from your defense. Look at the coaching staff at the bottom. Everyone is celebrating on the sideline for Lamar because they know they, they, they dodged a huge bullet on that last play. Well, yeah, and, and now again brings up fourth, so your only option is the home run ball because you know you can't kick it. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back, see what they can do. They're back to play. And here's a look at it. It looks like they are going. Of course, they have to. Playing deep across the middle. That's incomplete. It. Lamar University has eked out a win over Mississippi <laughs> Valley State University. But, boy, it was a cliffhanger, to say the least. Yeah, you got to give credit to Lamar Cardinals. Found some character and heart to be able to pull this game out and win the second game at home. Starting off the season 2-0. It was an ugly win, but they got a win. Coach Schultz will take it as he congratulates Mississippi Valley State. Now, Mississippi Valley State came out and, and gave Lamar everything they can handle as far as throughout this game. But the better team won despite a lot of turnovers, a lot of penalties, and inconsistency offensively for the, for the Lamar Cardinals. Well, you can only imagine. There's going to be a whole lot oh, of yeah. discussion going on. I told uh well, to go, Lemont, I don't want to be in that film room for the next couple of days well, uh, going through that way. or on the on the field the next couple of days because, you know, there's going to be a lot of work going into that one. But, again, Lamar does manage to pull out the win for Miss. There's uh, Marco Bourne <laughs> giving Mike Schultz a big hug and telling him congratulations. And if you're Mississippi Valley, tough loss for the second week in a row, this one in overtime. So for Lemont Williams, I'm Dan Gresham saying so long from Provo's Humphrey Stadium, where again the final score, Lamar 23, Mississippi Valley State University 20. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. <laughs>